Nissan dealers are number one. And we're going to keep it that way with rock bottom prices on 14,000 of our world-class sports cars. The legendary 300ZX, the new fuel-injected V6 200SX, and the all-new 16-valve Pulsar. All big performers, all big values with incredibly low prices. Your tri-state Nissan dealers are going to meet the challenge. We're going to deal and sell and sell and deal until it's done. We challenge you to get a better price and value anywhere. Come see us now. Old Man Winter is already battering many parts of the United States. So the time to get to Burlington Coat Factory is now. For the first choice of the largest selection of winter coats and jackets in the country, what every member of your family needs to keep warm, no matter how cold it gets. And because Burlington is famous for low prices, you can get your new winter coat at the lowest price imaginable. That should make you feel warm all over. Burlington Coat Factory, the next best thing to getting it wholesale. Before you do another load of laundry, we'd like to make a suggestion. Ask your clothes what they prefer. A cotton dish towel after a meal of pork and beans, a girl's poly cotton dress with a taste for chocolate syrup, and nylon shorts that like to play in mud all ask to be cleaned in different temperatures. So we took temperature sensitive cleaners for hot, warm, and cold and combined them in new liquid shear, one detergent that cleans like three. Watch how liquid shear eats up pork and beans in hot, melts away chocolate in warm, and mops up mud even in cold. So now when your clothes ask for different temperatures, give them a liquid that listens. They'll just fall over themselves to express their appreciation. Introducing new liquid cheer, one detergent that cleans like three. Yogi Bear will return in Yogi's First Christmas after these messages. Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye team up for music, romance, and holiday cheer in the Irving Berlin masterpiece, White Christmas. Saturday night at 7.30 on Fox Television Channel 5. Come with me. Come see something beautiful. Altress, Clairol's newest. The only permanent hair color with a gel colorant. Colors are soft, luminous. Look at them. Even Europe never made shades more beautiful. Delicate blondes, not brassy. Subtle browns, black, reds. Only Altress has extra conditioner. Hair feels soft, wonderful. Be the best you've ever been. With Gel Formula Altress by Clairol. In performance tests conducted earlier this year by the United States Auto Club, the best-selling European car in America, the Volkswagen Jetta, beat the Mazda 626 and the Honda Accord DX. The results were convincing, but now the deals are even better. Test the Jetta yourself at your Volkswagen dealer and drive home a winner. Drive home a winning deal from your tri-state Volkswagen dealer. Answer the question, comrade, if you please. What was Julius Marx more commonly known as? Karl? No. Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, enough, please. The Star Wars question. Who was Luke Skywalker's father? <laughs> <laughs> Trivial Pursuit, 6,000 questions of no vital importance whatsoever. From Sel Chow and Ryder. When you join U.S. Healthcare, it's good to know that when you need help, you see the doctor you've chosen in his yeah, office. Still higher than I'd like to see. No clinics. Okay, now what? No deductibles. But what's really good to know is that when he needs help, he's got a few colleagues he can turn to. This year, where you work, what purchase improved? You can vote for a new way of living. U.S. Healthcare. Roma Furniture. Many designs created exclusively for Roma. From the classic to the contemporary. All at a price you can afford. Next on the best of the National Geographic specials. The wonders of nature are captured as you've never seen them. Explore the invisible world. And the cornerstone of power and wealth. The Earth's most coveted gift. Gold. 
Invisible World, and Gold, two of the very best of the National Geographic specials. The best of the National Geographic specials. Monday night at 8 on Fox Television, Channel 5. Now that's what I call a breathtaking woman. A Lord and Taylor. I'd give anything for another whiff of cocoa. Introducing the Espresso Mini from Krups. Just the right size to give you delicious espresso. One cup at a time, two cups at a time, or even four cups at a time. Then turn on the steam and watch deep dark espresso become heavenly cappuccino. As tempting as this. Krups Espresso Mini. It's as simple as black or white. Now available at Macy's, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Crystal Dark for juices. Crystal Dark on the rocks. Crystal Dark for strawberries. Crystal Dark for champagne. Crystal Dark for jelly beans or for when you're thirsty. Whatever you put in it, Crystal Dark is for beauty. And best of all, it's surprisingly affordable. Crystal Dark, French lead crystal. Ralph Canisano created Ragu traditional spaghetti sauce, but he sold and left the Ragu company. Ralph Canisano has such a love for creating spaghetti sauces, he created another one named Francesco Rinaldi. Using the finest ingredients, he made Francesco Rinaldi's taste totally Italian. Mr. Canisano, which do you think tastes even more Italian? Francesco Rinaldi. As I got older, I got better. Ciao, Francesco Rinaldi. Ciao, Francesco Rinaldi. Yogi Bear will return in Yogi's First Christmas after these messages. An American literary classic comes to television. Bears not be married. Ernest Hemingway's romantic tragedy of love and hardship in war-torn Europe. Rock Hudson. Jennifer Jones. A farewell to arms. Saturday night at 11. Minolta Freedom 3. Freedom. New and worry free. Freedom. Auto focusing. Freedom. Auto everything. Freedom. Quick is all you do. Freedom. Freedom 3 comes through. Freedom. Freedom's what you've got. Freedom to take your fair shot. The Minolta Freedom line of 35 millimeter cameras. Only from the mind of Minolta. You don't have to be a French chef to use this French mini chop from SEB, New Parsley, Sage and Rosemary, in much less time. Chop onions, pepper, garlic, even nuts. Mini chop, quicker than a knife, simpler than a processor, at a price that will turn you on. Available at Macy's. I have a friend. He's smart. He's a computer, but he's also easy to use. All I have to do is put in one of these cards, and smart teaches me things. He tells me when I'm right and when I'm wrong. Smart knows math, spelling, reading, even music. Now, if I can only teach him to clean up my room. Smart. It may be the smartest gift you ever get your kids from Combi. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Call the Price Busters at Crabtree's. That's who to call. We're price busting this Mitsubishi Mirage to $59.99 and this beautiful Tredia to $89.99. I price busted this 87 Galat to $12,999. And look at this selection. Hundreds of Mitsubishis ready to go. Plus, you get the Crabtree guarantee of service after the sale. Come see the Price Busters at Crabtree Mitsubishi in New Rochelle. And let us bust our prices for you. We 
think of Staten Island as a place to live, not as a bustling manufacturing center. But at the Richmond Town Restoration's new museum, located in the old county headquarters, you'll discover 200 years of industry. You'll see the proud employees of the Atlantic Terracotta Works. Procter & Gamble's Linux soap made wash days easier. And the SS White Dental Manufacturing Company helped ease the pain of sitting there getting drilled. Well, they tried. The oyster beds were full and the crops harvested for market. But life was not all hard work on Staten Island. The restaurants, resorts, and amusement parks were busy too. The 1929 depression ended a lot of the industry, but at the Richmond Town Restoration, you'll see life as it was now, Wednesday through Sunday. This year, the best season's eatings are coming from Lewis Rich Breast of Turkey for a holiday feast, appetizer treats. You see, Lewis Rich is all lean white meat, hand-carved and cooked whole from the bird so it's juicy and delicious. And one goes farther than you can imagine. One taste and you'll know why Lewis Rich gets so many invitations around the holidays. It's a Lewis Rich to make turkey so right. Please pass the all fruit. Pass the polenta all fruit. Pass the polenta all fruit. Would you please pass the jelly? <laughs> polenta all fruit is real fruit, sweetened only with fruit juice and no added sugar. You'll call it delicious. You'll call it remarkable. Mm. But please don't dare call it jelly. Polenta all fruit, the spreadable fruit. Yogi Bear will return in Yogi's First Christmas after these messages. On my next show, we're going to have musical group cameo Baron de Massey of Monaco and outrageous Gallagher. Tonight at 11 on Fox Television Channel 5. Giant Carpet knows that just offering a low price isn't enough to attract today's smart shoppers. So Giant gives more. Take the half price clearance going on right now. You'll save 50%, not on just one or two carpets, but on over 60,000 yards of first quality, main brand carpet. And Giant's prices always include complete custom installation. No hidden extras. Come to Giant. You'll see why Giant Carpet is changing the way America buys carpet. I'm not ready to go yet, okay? I'm not ready. You gotta wait. Just, I got shit to do. I'm in the middle of something, right? Just hold on. Watch your mouth, <laughs> or don't come in here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh yeah, people. Come on, we're adults here. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the point? So, yeah, yeah, we're adults here. I got a fucking Burger King fucking thing on my head. We're all fucking adults here, guys. People, in my chat, two words. What are they? Two words. Let me let me see the chat flood. Let me see the chat flood. Two words. Okay, uh, next caller. Please. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, which translate in American to dick and balls. I, I got flip flops. These are my flip flops. Yeah, I, I, I really like my, my flip flops because I can like, I can like put them on. I can, and because look, watch me, watch me put them on. I can put them on all by myself. Watch me put, watch me put them on. Look, are you watching? Look, these are my flip flops. Thanksgiving Day. I remember it clearly. I was Thanksgiving Day. I was, I was inserting myself in somebody else's fucking business as a, uh, as a cash grab, and you know. This channel is harsh reality. Karen Yak se jodió la sucia vida. Amen. This is Jonathan Lee Bitches. This is, I have, I have cheeseburgers. I'm going to put cheese on them. I'm going to make sure that I have my hamburgers because I'm a big boy now and I can make the hamburgers. My mom lets me use the stove now. In a 
I'm just like, wow, they're they. I like receipts, and 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 they brought receipts. Like they had ev they had evidence to back up everything they said. And I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be another side to this, right? Like this can't, this can't. No, this is too fantastic. Yeah, because you're not going to just jump to the conclusion that there's a conspiracy amongst cops to cover up a murder. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean cops and just like soccer moms and shit. Like that's what made it even crazier. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, get it, Betty. Yeah, did you get have it. a close relationship with your mom? Get it, Betty. Oh, of course, get I it. still do. Yeah. <laughs> my, my older sister was kind of sad. She was more of the prissy girl. That, like, stole that is the best shit fucking you know, ever. For the with mommy. I was the you know, tomboy that liked playing with people. Shout out to Cherry for just being just easily the most faithful and loyal supporter that I've ever had, man that someone could have that tenacity with loyalty. Um, and I'm really blessed to have someone like Cherry be part of this channel and in my life. So um, it means a lot. And yes, I named him after Mr. T and Rocky. Say it, woman. Say it, woman. Say it, woman. Sit your old man ain't got no heart. Why don't you come down to my apartment? I showed you a real man. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so in love with this little dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I love you guys very, 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 very much. And we will do this again very soon, my friends. Oh, say bye, say bye. <laughs> oh, I love you too, give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. <laughs> bye guys. people people welcome oh my goodness i hope everybody's having a good week so far it's halfway over that also means clubber's only got like four more days three really technically three yeah three more days until he takes the space cadet gear off his head uh <laughs> And we don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about him eating up his stitches, breaking his stitches. Uh, so we're almost there, buddy. Um, <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Hope everybody's doing all right. Um, yeah, I was going to start this stream at like six. Uh, and it was going to be pretty short. And then I was like, you know what? There's a lot I want to go over. It's just like a lot. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to go over quite a bit. Um, I think uh, first what we're going to go over is going to be um, Vinny, uh, Vinny Politan on Court TV uh, discussed the um, discussed the details of what happened 
uh, in court yesterday with Karen Reed. Now, um, I haven't watched this yet. Uh, remember, I I want to like Vinny, man. I I and and I I think I'm there. <laughs> I think I'm there. Okay, the more and more that Vinny covers this case, because this is the case of all cases when it comes to like judging someone's integrity, uh, who covers it more or less. Um, if you're looking at somebody, cause the thing is, is like, it, there's, there's stuff that's just right in your face that you cannot ignore. My issue with court TV was that it seemed very, you know, leaning towards the whole Karen Reed is guilty. Uh, without actually anybody doing any real research who would sit up there on that on 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 Vinny's panel um, and discuss the case with him without actually knowing anything. But the thing is, is as I've stated before, poor Vinny, man, he's he covers a lot of cases. It's not just that he has covered a lot of cases. It's that he has covered a lot of cases and is currently covering a lot of cases. He cannot, he's a, he's a host of a TV show. He, he sits there with experts. The dynamic seems to work like, okay, well, you guys have been following the case. You tell me what you think. I'll tell you what I think based on the things that you're saying, blah, blah, blah. It seems to be that kind of dynamic, which is okay and understandable and acceptable if this is a guy who, like I said, is covering who knows how many cases. The, the the video I'm going to play is 45 minutes long, and this case is only one segment of it. It was the same the last time. So I'm not upset with Vinny. <laughs> like I said, the more and more he covers this, the more I like him because he's he's he finally, once he had Melanie Little up there, and Mel Melanie Little was just like, okay, without saying in so many words, she was basically just like, I'm sick of this farce. You know, like, this is ridiculous. This is actually what I have questions about. And then as soon as Vinny hears these questions, he goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> that is somebody with common sense. Um, that is somebody who is interested in learning, interested in facts. You know, uh, I, I don't blame him. He's going to have people up there who are claiming to be experts, one of them being a... Uh, former FBI agent uh, who he's had talking about this case for the longest time, which I haven't seen lately, but we're going to get into her too. We're going to talk about her as well, but not just yet. We're going to, we're going to go over um, Vinny's latest rev revelations. Cause I, I gotta be honest. I'm enjoying very much. I am enjoying uh, the, the Vinny, the Vinny realizing things little by little and going, ha, ah, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I, I am enjoying this. Um, so <laughs> yes, yes. All of the, uh, all of the, the, uh, coffin doffer nicknames that you can come up with in the chat. Fantastic. Um, and yes, man, uh, very different than, uh, then, then, then Melanie's rules here in the chat, <laughs> little less rules. Um, but, and Scott, man, don't be going, don't be going. What did you say? Sure. Noble on people. Okay. Don't do that because, uh, old Melanie's going to have your nuts. She's going to take them away from you. She's going to snatch them away from you. Roll them like dice, like in training day. Um, <laughs> Um, so, oh yeah, 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 Scott, we're going to, we're going to come up with all that stuff. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, she blocked me a while back, but I heard she was unblocking other people. Uh, and I was like, oh, maybe she'll unblock me. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Cause I, I would love to have a conversation with her, uh, now. I would love to have a conversation with her as of yesterday. <laughs> I think we got a super dad. Super dad. I think we got a super dad. 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 Super dad.
got a super <laughs> Brittany says, wait a minute, Claire. Stop calling names. LOL, LOL, LOL. Um, yeah, I, I name call here. Okay. I, I, I don't play by the rules. Uh, <laughs> I just don't. Um, you know, it's just so funny. Uh, someone mentioned in chat that they saw me drop in somebody else's chat. I dropped in Dolly's chat for a second. Um, cause I just left the comment. I got to give Dolly props cause he hasn't blocked me. Um, but he's like, he's one of these idiots that have been talking out of his ass on this case and then just decided to stop, uh, because he started talking about the Madeline Soto case. And, um, and, uh, he's, uh, been doing very well, uh, doing that. He's been benefiting very, very well doing that, um, by exploiting this poor child. Um, and so, you know, uh, all of a sudden the tragedy pimps got real quiet, got real upset, quiet. I don't need to be talking about that. Because he was talking a whole lot of shit. Um, but now, not so much. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, Team Brittany gifted 10 memberships. Let's see. Um, Boston Beauty by KK. Peace Faith. Deets. What's up, Deets? Good to see you. Uh, Paula D. Uh, Jay Mansfield. Amy, or no, not Amy in Boston, but she's a member. Lori Leonard. Uh, I wasn't born with thorns. Um, Chris Ecker, Sleuthy Goosey. Uh, it's good to see you again, too. Uh, Ashley Oaks. Welcome, guys. And thank you so much, Team Brittany, for that. That was very generous. I appreciate that. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, you guys are killing me. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. We got a super chat. <laughs> Stephanie, uh, I still need to see the super chat sign, the photo of. Oh, yeah, I went over that yesterday. Um, I'll I'll probably find it on Twitter. Um, let me go ahead and let <laughs> hold on. Let me see real quick if I can pull that up. Um somebody I think sent it to me, maybe. Um, uh, I don't know. No, no, that's not it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, Paul sent it to me. <laughs> um, here, hold on, let me show you guys something here. Here, for the, for Stephanie here, since uh, she really wants to see it. Um, Someone made this sign and was rocking this sign at the protest yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, that tickles me. Uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, I love that shit. <laughs> it's just because, like, I, I, I just love trolling cuck church. And, like, I didn't even do anything for this troll. This wasn't even meant to troll him. And yet it's a fantastic troll. Like, Cuck Church is officially part of the protests in wanting to free Karen Reed. And he doesn't even have an opinion on this case. I absolutely fucking love it. Uh, so whoever made that, uh, I mean, bravo. Whoever made that, bravo. Okay, so let's uh, let's get right into uh, old Vinny here. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And I'm going to begin this hour with this, the disclaimer I need to do every time I do this story. I have no agenda. My only agenda is the truth. <laughs> is finding out the truth about what... Okay, he said this last time. All right. Now, I imagine it's because poor Vinny has got a shit ton of fucking emails and 
DMs and tags on Twitter and all kinds of shit uh, where people are like, what the hell? She's guilty. When are you going to take the shit out of your ears and listen to your panelist coffin doucher? Why aren't you paying attention, Vinny? I'm going to skip the Super Chat song just for this one. Uh, D. Oni, thank you, though. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. So I imagine he's getting just the house of shit. You know, poor Vinny. Uh, I imagine he is. Um, and this is a testament to why I like Vinny now. Okay? This is where I'm at. Right now, I'm over that fence. I'm, I'm on Team Vinny now. And I got to tell you, I'm on Team Vinny because this is a guy who's telling the truth. He's saying, I am on the side of the truth. I am not on anybody's side. I'm not on Karen Reed's side. I'm not on the McCabe's side. I'm not on these prosecutors' side. I'm not on anybody's side here. Um. Oh, my goodness. Team Brittany, thank you so much. I am Batman. Scott, give up. Obviously, Will is Batman, period. Full stop. Yes, thank you, Team Brittany. Absolutely. That is 100% true. What's up, Tracy Ann? Chasey, it's good to see you. Uh, Peter A, remember for three months. Vinny's a turtle rider, but need to play the middle. <laughs> um, I don't think he's playing the middle. I mean, he's just being objective, and that's important. Someone in his position being objective, it's very, very, very important. Um, and I and I and I'm on board with it. And you got to say, you got to understand that it, even being objective in this case is going to make him subject to hatred. And what does that tell you? Think about it. You've got these pro people who've been protesting. You've got all these Norfolk County and 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 Canton and and Commonwealth of Massachusetts residents, locals, everybody who is super super stoked. Right? They're all super stoked about Karen Reed's innocence. They're on fire about it. We ain't got no quit is what they all say, right? They fully invested and believe in Karen Reed's innocence. Yet, they're not the ones threatening people. They're being charged for it, but they're not actually threatening anyone. So uh, Team Brittany gifted 10 more memberships. Oh my goodness, Team Brittany, thank you so much. Um, Jimmy James, Rubicon, or no, Rub uh, not Rubicon, Jimmy James, but Rubicon, Rubicon is a member. Thank you. A.G. Carp, S.J. Howard, Mindy, Dave's Channel, Ashley Oaks, or not Ashley Oaks, Nikki Harrison, but is a member. Nikki Harrison, Kel B, Lisa M, Just Christy the, Christy, Chrissy the Crone, or the Crony, uh, Kimberly McGuire, Right on. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Team Brittany. Appreciate you so much. Um, so you have to understand that there's straight up threats happening. People's people are trying to shut down my channel. People are trying to people are are, are spreading lies about me or embellishing the truth on other occasions on other things. Um and just talking completely out of their asses. You have Grant, who's lying on everybody he could possibly lie on. You have just all this absurd, insane behavior coming from people who are just so dead set on Karen Reed being guilty. Now, what's interesting also about this is after yesterday, we started to see some more, right? Team Brittany. Gifted 10 more memberships, Team Brittany. You're killing me here. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Congrats to LKJ, Lisa PJ, Marie the Manaya, Scott, Froggy Smiles, Melanie, Heavy Hauler 617, Hats Ship Suits, uh, Lee Seca, Bob C. Congrats, guys. Thank you again, Team Brittany. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Um, so now that yesterday took place and it, 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 now we're hearing these words a lot, she should just take a plea. Karen Reed should just take a plea and be done with this because she is cooked. They jumped to this conclusion after hearing the defense 
give so many, so many reasons. Now, oh, Team Brittany, Jesus, <laughs> I am grateful, but I would love to get on with my show. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, though. Jesus, you're incredibly generous. Um, T. Marie, congrats. Uh, Drew P. Gambino, Anne Marie, White Paint, Jessica Neff, Hills Bills, uh, Alligator, Eliza Epstein, Ruby Chase, Mad Chatter 102. Um, <clears throat> right on. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Team Brittany. Um, <clears throat> and congrats to you guys. Um, and Congrats to every single person who gets gifted a membership the rest of this stream. I'm thanking you in advance, and I'm thanking you, Team Brittany, in advance, and I'm congratulating all of you. As a matter of fact, you all who have not gotten memberships, including the ones who just have, you guys get a standing ovation. That's my disclaimer if I'm going to continue on with my show for every time that you gift 10 memberships, um, which, I, again, I'm very grateful for. But uh, these wonderful, beautiful people uh, don't want to be here for nine hours. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much, Brittany. Jesus, you're way too kind to me. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're constantly, 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 constantly um, just it, it, you see this behavior on a constant basis. Like, and I'm no angel. OK, I'm no angel. Like on Twitter, I stopped giving a fuck. Seriously, like I just stopped giving a fuck. Uh, I, I, I just I, I draw I, I call people names. I, I tell people that they're not going to be missed when they're dead. I, I tell people horrible things that I just don't give a shit about uh, anymore uh, because these are shitty fucked up people who have nothing better to do with their lives than to make up lies and 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 try to defame people because they are saying things they don't like uh, I have no respect for this uh, so um, as far as I'm concerned Anything that I say is justified to these people, anybody who does these things, anybody who engages in this behavior, anybody who can't just simply have a conversation uh, that is at least backed up with some sort of fact. Um, I, I just I don't have the patience for for shitty people anymore. And I'm tired of 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 feeling like in order to be a successful YouTuber, I have to pretend uh, like I, like I am more tolerant of this kind of shit. Uh, and the truth is, is I'm not, uh, and I'm tired of acting like it. And I've always said from the beginning, I don't like this to feel like work. Um, and that feels like work that feels stressful to me to have to sit here and pretend that I'm somebody I'm not and try to be the bigger person in a situation when I am not that bigger person. I am absolutely immature. I am absolutely petty. And I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I seriously do not give a fuck about how you feel. Nobody. Seriously, nobody. Like, not when it comes to the internet. I just don't. I think it's ridiculous. The, the, the notion that somebody could be hurt by something that I say on the internet is absurd to me. So... I, I, I just, and if they delete my Twitter, I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just don't care. Um, like, I, I just don't. Sorry for those of you who are watching on Twitter. I realize there's there's quite a few of you right now watching on Twitter, and I appreciate it. But, uh, you know, and, and who knows? I, I could lose this channel too. Who the fuck knows? And then whatever, I'll have to go back to doing anything that I've ever done before in order to put food on my table. I don't care. This is a blessing and it's fun. And I do not intend to squander it by pretending to be something I'm not. 
So I just want to be very clear about that. Um, Team Brittany, I don't give a fuck either, Will. Right. What, why? Why do I have to be cordial? Why do I have... I'm not running for fucking select board like Rita. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not a witness in this case. I'm nothing except somebody who is watching the shit happen. And there are certain things that piss me off. And there are certain things... Most of it pisses me off. But if I don't find the humor in it, I, 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 I'll, I'll lose my shit. No, I don't think that it's funny that a Boston police officer lost his life. No, I don't think it's funny that an innocent woman is being railroaded and framed. No, I don't think it's funny that there are uh, that there is a, a, a conspiracy taking place to cover up this murder between fucking uh, cops and and ex cops and whatever the fuck and lacrosse moms. Um, and thank you for, uh, the membership VK, sir. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, thank you, Gerda K. Um, appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's really annoying. I, I use words like constant, like content. I use words like retarded and it's very easy. If these words offend you, you just simply say, Hey, I don't like that guy. And I don't like that he uses that language. So uh, I'm not going to watch it. I mean, that's literally the worst thing that you could do to me. It's literally the worst thing that you could do is, is, is be like, I don't want anything to do with this guy anymore. But when you start to act stupid on social media and I have nothing better to do but to sit there and, and insult you, then that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to feel bad about how you feel about it because there's something sick and wrong with you if you let social media control your fucking life. And you sit there and get so upset over something that you see on social media. This person is vile. They're vile and disgusting. Like, okay, so block them. You know? <laughs> Here, this is way quicker. Congrats to everybody who just got gifted memberships. Congrats, folks. Um, oh, wait. Why can't I find that? There we go. Um, so I went on a little rant there. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to get that off my chest, but the thing is, is because let me go back to what it is that I was talking about that put me in that position to where I feel this way now. And I express that to you is this type of behavior. And now this behavior has probably boiled over to this guy since Melanie Little was on his panel dropping facts. That tells you something. When people get upset over asking the right questions, because that's exactly what happened. I mean, we're seeing this in degrees on a constant basis. We saw this happen with Turtle Boy. Turtle Boy was arrested and charged because people didn't like what he was saying. No other reason. No other reason. I mean, yeah, okay, well, oh, she showed up, he showed up to a lacrosse game, and everybody's so fucking up in arms about the fact that he show up, showed up to a kid's lacrosse game where it didn't traumatize fucking anybody. Now, if it had, that would be a different story. We would probably be most likely be having a very different conversation. But it didn't. He showed up to this lacrosse game. Nobody fucking gave a shit. It didn't interrupt the game. The referee didn't stop the game and go, hey, hey, what's going on up there? And then everybody, hey, what's on? No, 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 none of that shit happened. What these people got upset about was that Turtle Boy was asking them questions. The only thing 
that these so-called witnesses were intimidated by was the truth. And what does that say about you if you are intimidated by the truth? What does that say about you? And the more we find out, the more there's truth to everything that Turtle Boy has been saying. Like him or not. Like him or not. Doesn't matter what your opinions are of this dude. They don't matter. The dude's been right so far. <laughs> He's been right so far. And this makes people angry. Because now people who are protesting are supposedly, allegedly having their pictures taken from government officials sitting in their car at these protests, at these trial hearings. Because what we're dealing with is a corrupt system. This cannot be underestimated. If the more and more information comes out that this system is corrupt, there is more to be afraid of. There is less to be underestimated. These people have resources and are capable of manipulating the law to hurt someone else. We, we are accusing them of doing this exact thing right now. Why would they not go after nobodies? And I don't believe they're nobodies. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying people who just happen to be people who feel strongly about this but aren't involved in the case directly. I mean, I, I wouldn't put anything past a corrupt system, a corrupt local system. I would not put anything past them. What we are watching right now is a Netflix documentary in real time. We're right in the middle of it. This is a, a, a true crime documentary series in real time, right now. Anything could fucking happen. Because we've seen so many of these. The reason why I say that is because we've seen so many of them where something crazy happens and then something crazier happens to cover that up and then something crazier happens than that, so on and so forth. And we've seen crazier with certain things in true crime documentaries, sure. But we've never seen circumstances in a case like this. We've never seen this kind of behavior, blatant abuse of power happening from Two different law enforcement agencies, as well as the, the, the local district attorney's office, the county district attorney's office. This is something we've never seen. I've never seen it. At least I've never seen it where it was happening in real time and the locals got together in high numbers to protest against it. That I have never seen. And I'm fucking here for it. But the thing is, is when you get people like this who are capable of the things that we all believe they're capable of and you get them desperate, it is naive to think that we can imagine what they're capable of. So let's keep that in mind. But I'll tell you this. I believe 150% in what you guys are doing. The reason why, and I've said it many times, and I'm going to say it many more times. The reason why I am so involved and invested in this case is because of you. Because of how this is affecting you. Watching it, watching the select board meetings, watching you guys protest. This is, it's impossible for anybody in my opinion with a soul to not be touched by this to some degree 
Now, me, it's very inspiring. For me, it's very inspiring. <clears throat> but for people to try to shut this down when all they're asking for is the truth. Because what it boils down to is, again, whether Karen Reed is innocent or guilty, we've seen overwhelming evidence that this that the investigation into the death of a Boston police officer was done at the very least incredibly ne negligently. But see, there's so much negligence in this particular case and not so much with the same investigators in surrounding investigations that you have to suspect corruption. You would be a fool to not suspect corruption. There's way too much wrong with this investigation. Way too much. So. Now. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, as far as Turtle Boys. Um, if I can help it, uh, I will stream it tomorrow. I will do my best to stream it tomorrow. Um, normally what I do is I just sit and chat in Tom's chat. Uh, and I see you, Tom, in the chat here. What's up, Tom? Um, so normally I'll just watch from his stream, uh, and then like, I'll stream like highlights from it later. Um, but, um, I don't know tomorrow, uh, a lot hangs on tomorrow. Um, and, and I, I, I want to be, uh, I want to be able to stream it if I possibly can. So. Yeah. So, uh. This, 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 basically, Vinny's in a position to where he has to protect himself. He didn't have to do that. It's very telling that he never had to give some sort of, he knew that there were protesters. He knew that there was a whole town divided. He would state this. He would say this town is divided over this. Before he had Melanie Little on his channel to discuss and ask the questions that sh that need asking. Thank you, Brittany, again. Appreciate it. Um, now... At no point before that did Vinny feel the need to give this disclaimer. I find that fascinating. What happened to Boston police officer John O'Keefe? I haven't taken sides. I have an open mind. I need to see and hear all the evidence because this case is unlike any other case that I've covered in my... Okay. <laughs> career all the evidence because now everything that he just said was almost verbatim to what i said the very first time i started talking about this case on a live stream everything that that vinny just said was almost verbatim it was almost verbatim to what Melanie Little said the first time that she went over this. Because this case is unlike any other case that I've covered in my career here at Court TV. There you go. Let's begin with the defendant. Karen Reed was uh, back in court today. Again, on her way in, all the supporters are there. Um, She's accused of running over her police officer boyfriend on purpose and leaving him to die in the snow. She claims she is the victim of a police cover-up and frame job, where they framed her for the murder after someone at the house she was dropping him off at had actually killed him in an after-hours party after Karen and John had gone bar hopping that night. That's the setup of the story. So today in court, um, some important stuff was happening. Two defense motions were argued in court. A motion to dismiss the indictment. Um, this is huge because they're laying out a lot of the evidence 
as to why the indictment itself should go away and a jury should not even hear this case. Then there was a motion to disqualify and sanction the Norfolk District Attorney Michael Morrissey. Now, the court has reserved ruling on both of these issues after the arguments today, but I will tell you, they are both long shots just because of the nature of them. It is rare that a judge will dismiss an indictment, and it is rare that a judge will disqualify and sanction a district attorney. But like I said in the beginning, this case is unlike any case I've covered in my career at Court TV. So let's start with that motion to dismiss. Um, we're talking about crucial evidence here that was discussed during this motion. Uh, and, and it begins with the Google search that was made by Jennifer McCabe. She's one of the people that is in the house um, that Karen Reese and John O'Keefe went into, okay? Um, also argued were, were evidence regarding John O'Keefe's actual cause of death. How did he die? You know, was he, was, is, was he run over by a car? or was he beaten inside the home that Karen Reed says she dropped him off at? Um, so beginning with the Google search, the, the Google search is how long to die in the cold, right? And when you look and, and it says hose long because it was misspelled in the Google search itself, but here you can see the protesters know. They know what the big issue in this case is, is that this alleged search was done hours before John O'Keefe was found dead in the snow on the front lawn of this home. Now, I got a little gripe with Vinny there. Just a small one, not a big one. Uh, last time they talked about that truck going by, Court TV threw some shade on these protesters and strongly implied that these protesters were not doing this uh, because they believed in anything. It was incredibly insulting. Um, because these people have looked at all these documents and they have come to the conclusion that Karen Reed is innocent. They have come to the belief, the strong belief that Karen Reed is innocent. And when you imply that they are under Karen Reed's employ or anyone else's for that matter, you're taking away why they're doing it. You're taking the piss right out of it. And frankly, it's un-American in my opinion. Um, these are decent people. Um, now, I will I will say, actually, they did have um, Nick Rocco, and Vinny talked to Nick Rocco. So, um, I mean, that went well. <laughs> and he was one of the Canton Nine. But I don't think that they discussed or covered whether or not he was being paid. Or any of the protesters were being paid. Um, so, and I only caught a little bit about uh, of that Nick Rocco interview. I know Turtle Boy went over it. Maybe I'll go over that as well, um, and then I'll eat my words if uh, if I'm wrong. So, um, but yeah, that's that. I I'm still a little sour over that. So, if the search is done at two thirty in the morning, then there's no way that Karen Reed could have committed the murder. It would have been someone inside. Why else would you search how long to die in the cold at that time of the early morning hours? So Alan Jackson, the attorney, big time attorney, right? Uh, flying in from LA, uh, representing uh, Karen Reed here, I made the argument today about that search. Take a listen. This is not in our, our papers, but obviously it's, a complete and probably the most obvious distortion of the facts. The Commonwealth suppressed one of the most obvious pieces of exculpatory evidence in the entire case, and that was a piece of evidence that they know torpedoes their entire case and their theory of this case, and that's Jennifer McCabe's Google search. All right, Vinny, I know you're not listening, but I'll say it anyway. I'm sorry. I apologize at 2.27 a.m., how long to die in cold. They had the, her phone at the time of the grand jury. They had her complete extraction of that phone at the time of the grand jury. They had a Celebrite report, Your Honor, at the time of the grand jury, and yet they did not present this evidence. They claim, oh, we didn't have the right version of the Celebrite uh, software. That's on them. That's not our fault, certainly not Ms. Reed's fault. That's their fault. Get the right software. 
if you're going to bring this case, do it the right way. They say their, their argument is, well, we just didn't have the right software, so we didn't have the information. That's not true. They did have the information. It was sitting in her phone. They just didn't do their job and extract it. And should the Commonwealth once again stand up in some sort of def desperate pitch to dispute that time and this critical evidence, the court should note the following. Not only does the Celebrite report confirm the search and the time of that search, not only do our experts confirm the search and the time of that search, but now a Quantico-trained special agent with the FBI's Regional Computer Forensic Lab. In other words, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation also specifically confirms that that search was made on Jennifer McCabe's phone and it was made... Everyone... <laughs> Everyone who wants to believe that Karen Reed is guilty fucking hates that fucking look on her face right now. Like, it is, it is gut-wrenching to them. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I think it's just fucking hilarious. Seriously. Um, <laughs> she's sitting there in pure victory going, dude, because this isn't just about her getting justice. Listen, she's a human being, folks. All right. This isn't just about her getting justice. This isn't just about the fact that she's probably pissed. I would imagine so that her boyfriend is probably not getting justice. But she's also thinking, fuck that bitch. Fuck Jen McCabe. She's human. Why would she not be above? Why, or why would she be above that, <laughs> that thought process? Why would she be above those feelings? You know what I'm saying? Like that is an in your face, bitch. Smirk. Let's watch it one more time because I love it. I think it's fucking great because the fact of the matter is people, I don't know what role besides the Google search that Jen McCabe had in all of this, well, in John O'Keefe's death directly, I don't know what role she had in that. But I'll tell you this, she's a fucking liar. She is absolutely a fucking liar. There's no denying that. So when you see a woman who's been going through this shit for two years, still hasn't had a chance to properly mourn her boyfriend. So here she is two years later and she's supposed to be above those kind of feelings. Fuck you. Get real people. This is the real world. Let's watch. Let's watch this one more time. Here we go. I, cause I, I can't get fucking enough of it. The FBI's Regional Computer Forensic Lab. In other words, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation also specifically <laughs> confirms that that search was made on Jennifer McCabe's phone and it was made on or before 227 and 40 seconds a.m. on January 29th, 2022. That fact, Your Honor, is no longer open for debate. Compelling argument, right? And and you're using the FBI. The defense is using the FBI. Unlike any... Okay. The defense is using the FBI, unlike any other case, right? That's where Vinny's going. Also, you got to think, it's very fascinating because, because this... The... the the defense, the people are saying, oh, well, it's the defense. Her defense team, they're going to say shit. They're going to say whatever they have to say in order to defend their client. That's their job. Okay, sure. But the problem with this is, this is a much different monster because they filed a motion. They filed a motion to dismiss and disqualify the Norfolk County District Attorney from this case. That means that they're accusing him of misconduct. That means that they're making accusations. That means that they are now, at least as far as this motion goes, they are under the, um, the burden of proof. They are under the burden of proof. 
So they're not going to just sit up there and tell a judge that these things are fact without being able to show the FBI's findings and the U.S. attorney's findings. They're not going to be able to do that because they would be facing reprimand, strong reprimand for that. That's that's career-ending shit, I would imagine, for Jackson and Yannetti to make those kind of accusations and not be able to prove them. So when people are sitting there and arguing with me on Twitter going, oh, well, we haven't seen the FBI report. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet. What they're, they're, they're just giving us their interpretation of what's in the report. That's their job is to twist things around and add smoke and mirrors and sleight of hand and woo. No, dude, they have to prove that. That's what they do in trial. That's what they're supposed to do in trial. Okay. But when it comes to a motion where they are <laughs> making accusations to professional investigators employed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as well as the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office, who represent the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in a court of law every time. They better be able to prove that shit. They better be able to prove these things that they're saying. And I just don't think that these guys are going to just say that shit. You know? Sure, like I said, that applies in trial, but this isn't trial yet. Any case I've ever covered here. Now, you have to remember, at this point... There is a federal investigation of the in state investigators in this case. So the feds are looking at the state investigators, and that information has now been given to both sides. So that's a compelling argument. But now let's hear the, the, the state, the, the prosecutor's response to that regarding this Google search. Lastly, get to the, uh, the Google search and... I would agree with counsel in the sense that it's really no longer open for debate, but I'm not really sure why we're still even talking about this or why this is still a topic uh, that they're pushing. Essentially, what it we really have is, is uh, yes, what counsel mentions is there is one expert who was given two extra. I, I got to say to your comment, Deets, you're absolutely right. Um, but thank God for like Olivia. <laughs> Because Olivia is just, she's just the fact dropping dopest. I mean, I, I, I would absolutely be exhausted if it wasn't for Olivia. Olivia just ho holds it all down, like totally holds it all down. Like she is just dropping fact after fact, document after document. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it can be exhausting. Yes. I, I definitely couldn't do that in a Facebook group. There's no fucking way I could do both. Extractions, presumably provided by defense counsel, uh, that indicates uh, from that particular FBI expert uh, that the searches were done at two something in the morning. What counsel neglects to sort of raise and, and stress with the court is that there's a separate, uh, and I forget exactly what it stands for, but an RCFL uh, uh, analysis of the phone in which through both Axiom and through Celebrite. Uh, and that conclusion of that expert is that the searches occurred when Ms. McCabe testified they occurred because the defendant asked her to conduct those searches at 6.23 and 6.24 in the morning. Really, the argument stops at the point of it's not, we didn't do our job to get a cell. The Celebrite version that shows that information did not exist at the time of the grand jury. So I'm, I'm not. Now, see, I got to play devil's advocate here. The searches occurred when Ms. McCabe testified they occurred because the defendant asked her to conduct those searches at 6.23 and 6.24 in the morning. Really, the argument stops at the point of it's not. We okay, so what was she nodding at right there? Like, was she admitting that, <laughs> that Jen McCabe uh, told her to do that? Uh, or, or that she told Jen McCabe to do that? Um, but it really looked more to me like like uh alan jackson was on that side of her saying something and she was acknowledging what he was saying
Right. She's talking to Jackson. Right, 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 right. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. Like I said, I, I, I you cannot accuse me of not uh, uh, of not playing devil's advocate. We didn't do our job to get a cell. The cell bright version that shows that information did not exist at the time of the grand jury. So I'm, I'm not really sure how the Commonwealth is supposed to run something through a cell bright version that isn't in existence at the time the grand jury is conducted. So you have a discrepancy now between experts and trying to figure out information from a phone when a search was made. So to me, this issue is still up in the air. It's way up in the air. Both sides are convinced of their side, but hey. I mean, I, I agree that it's up in the air in the sense that, that um, I agree that it's up in the air in the sense that, that uh, it's not, we haven't like heard an FBI agent testify to it. You see what I'm saying? I like, I, I always take these things with a great assault. Okay. I always do. Um, but I, I, like I said, I don't think that Jackson would stand up there and say these things without being able to prove that this Quantico, <laughs> this Quantico expert, uh, says that the, the 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 search happened at 227. I mean looking at the celebrite looking at the celebrite report, you see there's three different searches. Like when I went over it, I because it was hard to read, but when I went over it, I would I I, I would say the same thing. I, just, I mean they happened three different searches. So I mean you're sitting there trying to tell me that one of them didn't happen. That makes no sense that the phone like data went back in time and put the one back there in time that happened at six something. That doesn't make sense. Like it just, it doesn't add up when you just use your common sense. It doesn't matter what you know about cell phones, or what you don't know about cell phones. It's just that there's no fucking way. And you take that with the, the, the fact that there's just no fucking way that they're going to reopen every single other case that would be subject to reopening when they got a conviction based on Celebrite data evidence. What are they going to do with Brian Walsh now? If that goes through, if that flies in court, what are they going to do with Brian Walsh now? We know that motherfucker did it. That's one motherfucker I know is guilty. But what are they going to do with Brian Walsh? I mean, and this is what people aren't paying attention to. When you're watching a, a, a three-card Monty trick, right? What are you doing? You're watching the hands. You're 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 watching the hands and you're watching the ball, right? You're you're watching the card. You're keeping your eye on that one card without taking your eye off it, no matter how much it moves around. And that one card in this scenario, in this analogy, in this metaphor, that one card is the fact that it was the prosecution that has created doubt in a piece of evidence and not the defense when it's the defense's job to come up with doubt. It's not the defense's job to bring evidence to the table. They're the ones. Jackson said himself, it was the prosecution that actually fucking searched the, the, the Celebrite data that actually did the search initially during the grand jury. And yet they didn't present it as evidence. Why not? Why is the prosecution taking evidence and creating doubt in that evidence? when it's the defense's job to put holes in evidence. See, that's the card that nobody's looking at here. That the prosecution has been in defense this entire time. The prosecution has yet to present a case against Karen Reed that holds any water whatsoever. And yet the, pro the defense, every single time that there is a hearing for the last two years, the defense has brought to the table something shady about the prosecution or the prosecution's investigation. That is extremely telling. 
that's that's the card that people took their eye off of. That the prosecution has not yet presented a compelling case on paper or to a judge against Karen Reed. And yet the defense is constantly giving <laughs> examples and showing evidence. Turtle Boy is out there doing two months in jail for showing evidence that this investigation was fucked from the word go. Nobody wants to like, look at that. Like that's. Hey, you've got to convince us. You know, when I say us, I mean the jury ultimately. Now let's talk about the cause of death here. Um, some of the images that we've seen of John O'Keefe's arm, we've seen some of the injuries on the arm. Uh, the defense is saying that these are consistent with a dog attacking him inside the house, a dog, a dog. That has been sent away <laughs> somewhere. Um, there's also a video of Karen Reed driving the car. And did she make contact here? Is this how she damaged the back of her car? Or did she damage the back of the car when she uh, backed over and ran over John O'Keefe? Let's take a listen to the prosecutor now explaining the circumstances of John O'Keefe's death. There is no suggestion of a third party culprit, no suggestion of cover up of evidence, no suggestion uh, from the 13 civilians uh, witnesses testimony that we've received uh, or transcripts of that testimony. All of them confirmed that Mr. O'Keefe never entered 34 Fairview Road. All of it uh, was absolutely no animosity between the individuals at the Waterfall Bar or at 34 Fairview residence. There was no fight. There was no dog attack. There was no eyewitness to the circumstances that led to Mr. O'Keefe's death. Okay, so now the defense, they're going to use the federal investigation once again. And an FBI expert, take a listen. Now Mr. Lally has in his possession another thing from the feds that we didn't have access to. The federal investigators hired, independent of us, we had no idea, and independent of the Commonwealth, hired a professional reconstructionist, three PhDs, to look into exactly this, this issue. Did Karen Reed's car, did her SUV make contact with John O'Keefe? And their conclusion to a person was his injuries were inconsistent with the damage on the car. The, the damage on the car was inconsistent with having, been made, having made contact with John O'Keefe's body. In other words, the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car, period, full stop. That's their <laughs> independent expert, not ours. Okay, now, as you know, there's been this incredible groundswell of support for Karen Reed. It's really been led by this man. He's been on the show. There he is, the turtle boy and his turtle riders. Um, he's a blogger. He calls himself a journalist. He calls himself a YouTuber. However you want to define him, um, he has sort of spearheaded um, this support for Karen Reed. But in the meantime, He's now been arrested and is facing charges for allegedly intimidating witnesses. Here he is uh, being released uh, in one of the times he got locked up. I mean, the story is, again, unlike any case trial I've covered in my history at Court TV. So I am fascinated by the support for Karen Reed. I, I understand, I think, from our discussions with Turtle Boy, um, where his support comes from. And, he, you know, he's, a, he, he's covering the story and he was covering true crime stories and became convinced that Karen Reed was innocent. But how about the rest of those folks? The rest of those folks. Well, let me bring in our guest, special guest joining us tonight from Wilmington, Massachusetts, oh, okay, avid Karen good. Reed Here supporter, and apparently the man who funded the Karen Reed billboard truck, Nick Rocco, is with us tonight, uh, Nick. Okay, so again, I've, I'm going to formally apologize to Vinny and Court TV for making this right. <laughs> Man, that shit chapped my ass. Oh, you have no idea when they like basically implied that this these people were being paid. Oh man, Nick, thanks so much for joining us. 
How you doing, Vinny? Thanks for having me on. Good. So, so everyone knows there's a slight delay, so he's hearing me in a delay, so I'm just going to wait for uh, Nick's responses. So, Nick, do you have any connection to Turtle Boy? Do you have any connection to Karen Reed? No, other than getting involved in this case, um, I have no personal connection to any anyone involved. So what is it? Why? Why would you spend your own hard-earned money, because I know you work hard, um, for the billboards? Why would you spend the time to support an accused cop killer? Like the way Vinny well, first, that. I do want to say that all these mobile billboards, the billboard that was put up in front of Gillette Stadium, uh, it did not come out of my pocket. We have a Facebook group that um, basically funds everything. Um, the signs that you see there as well, um, someone in the group makes them. Everyone makes their own signs. Um, we're definitely not paid to be there. Uh, a lot of us take work off to be there. And at this point, it's become yeah, a... Yeah, yeah. It's this really cool thing called democracy. ...passion to a lot of people because... The evidence that's being provided by the defense is backed up with receipts. And um, it almost seems like every time that something new, uh, groundbreaking, is brought forward, the Commonwealth always decides to be like, look over there, you know, oh, look, she kissed him, or, or this person's doing that. And, you know, if Tom. you look at the facts of what's being presented, to me, um, it's clear as day she is 100% the fact. You know, breaking his. We gotta, we gotta give Tom his. The Commonwealth moment, always decides to be like, look over there. You know, oh look, she kissed. We, we we gotta give Tom his moment, bro. Like Tom is on court TV, y'all. Like let's let's give it up for Tom. <laughs> I love it. It's him or or this person's doing that, and you know, if you look at the facts of what's being presented to me, um, it's clear as day she is one hundred percent innocent. Now, Nick, there are thousands and thousands, thousands of people I've, I've interacted with online and have met at courthouses that are like court TV fans and true crime buffs, et cetera. And I know that they get connected to cases. Is this the first time you've been connected to a case or has this always been something where you're talking about justice and looking at uh, what you believe to be injustices? No, I've not I've never been involved in anything like this. Um, this is a very powerful movement. Say each and every person that you see at these protests and at these rallies um, truly believes that, you know, this could be them. And I think that's why you see so many people come out because again, presented, how can you, how could you say she's guilty? Um, th there's, there's lots of lying going on, withholding evidence going on. Um, I've I've Fast. I've seen a few cases and and I've never seen something like this. So Nick, let me ask you now. Turtle Boy under indictment charges. He's got to battle his own legal battles while still supporting Karen Reed. Have you been charged with anything? Have you been questioned? Have you been confronted by law enforcement or prosecutors? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, me and nine other people, um, and one yeah. of them at the time was a minor, uh, were holding yeah, no. signs on a public sidewalk in, in downtown Canton, uh, across the street from a specific pizza shop. Um, we just happened to be because it's, it's the main road down there. And, uh, we got summons to court for a magistrate hearing, uh, witness intimidation on a police officer for not giving our names and then also picketing a witness uh, because we were apparently too close or within the eyesight is what they told us of a witness at the time. Now, we did we did have this magistrate hearing back in January, and we were told that we would have an answer within a week, and we're going on um, two months now with no answer to if there was probable cause or not. Has this deterred you from showing up? Has it altered your behavior in any way? I mean, my behavior was never bad to begin with. Um, it's not <laughs> illegal to hold a sign. It's not illegal to, to speak what you want. Um, it has not stopped me from going to the, the court cases. Um, I would say I, I don't 
I don't go to Canton anymore um, because I feel like there may be a target on people's backs if they do protest there. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't say I, I have anything to worry about um, because we're just there to support her realistically. All right, let's talk right. about uh, the victim in all of this, John O'Keefe. Um, what message do you have for his family? Mm. I mean, they've lost this. John is gone forever. Officer John O'Keefe is gone. What message do you have for his family? Absolutely. Um, you know, through this whole thing, there. I'm sure you've seen it as well. There is there is two sides to this middle, and um, it, it almost seems like no matter what side you are on, uh, to the other person, you're going to be wrong. Um, I, I want to see justice for John O'Keefe. Um, obviously something very tragic happened, uh, inside that house. And like the FBI had said, you know, the recon reconstructionist had said that his damages do not match a vehicle striking him. A and I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, I, I really hope one day, um, justice is going to come very soon. Um, and, and I, re I really do, uh, hope we can get there soon because it's getting, this case is turning very messy. Let me ask you, Nick. Is there anything? There's going to be a trial, all right? This thing. Yeah, people are getting desperate. People like the more truth that comes out, the more desperate the people who have things to hide are going to become. Um, this is just a fact. Is headed for the trial. Looks like it's going to happen in April. Is there anything that you you could hear during the course of the trial? Because we haven't heard all the evidence yet that could change your mind about Karen Reed. Vinny, there's not much that we really haven't heard. Um, I feel like, yes, the Commonwealth has discovery, but, you know, which officer was handling that evidence when it was put in? Uh, to be honest, the only way that I would ever uh, believe that Karen Reed did this is if they got the video camera footage uh, from across the street or from the ring camera footage that was potentially on 34 Fairview Road. Now, if you can provide cameras on that street, if you can provide the video evidence and show me that she did it, um, you know, not just finding uh, taillight on five separate undocumented visits and just be like, oh, yeah, yeah. we yeah. found it. Um, that that I, don't, yeah, I, don't I don't buy personally. But so the only thing that I would ever change my mind is if you showed me a video of Karen Reed uh, throwing the car in reverse at 24 miles per hour and striking John. But that video doesn't exist because that didn't happen. All right, final question, Nick. If I head up there in April when this trial happens, what's the scene going to be like outside the courthouse? Uh, what's the scene going to be like inside the courtroom? So uh, today, um, they, they, they limited the amount of people that could go inside. There was about 60 people that were allowed to go inside. Um, April, the weather's going to be nicer, Vinny. Uh, I mean, you see people out there on days like today or like frigid cold in February. You're going to see more people coming out in April. And considering it's going to be an everyday thing, you're going to have people out there. I can guarantee I mean, look you at that. all day until that's, she walks in that courtroom. Beautiful. Until she walks out of that courtroom, you're going to have people outside. Well, Nick, that's uh, the dopest I appreciate shit you ever. coming on tonight. This is a very unusual case. Um, I just have to correct one thing. You said it was frigid cold. I believe it was wicked cold. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Wicked cold. That's right. right. Wicked cold. Um, yeah, I was waiting for that. All right, Nick, uh, appreciate it. Thanks so much. And perhaps if I'm up there, I will run into you because apparently you're going to be outside the courthouse with the rest of the folks. Unbelievable. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, it's time to hear from our think tank. Is there enough evidence for prosecutors? Is there enough evidence to prosecute someone else? Is it a stronger case against the police or Karen Reed? That's next. Join Court TV's Vinny Politan. In every story, story in every trial, every case, there's at least two. Vinny's like, yeah, we're not doing the coffin knocker thing now, because, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I wouldn't blame him. He doesn't even have Melanie Little up there, you know? Like, 
I mean, it's stupid because she's the one who brought the facts to court TV about the case. But, you know, I, I, I get it. In his own words, D.A. Morrissey revealed he has an interest in this case that goes beyond the interests of justice. He revealed that he knew that his office was being unfairly targeted and investigated. And it doesn't matter if his belief or knowledge was right or wrong. It's only important that he believes it. And this means he has a personal interest in getting Karen Reed convicted. If he can use whatever means he has at his disposal to convict her and he succeeds, that would vindicate him and harm the federal investigation of his office. On the other hand, if she's found not guilty. Yeah. It, yeah. If there's a trial, probably, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, um, I, I, I just don't see the thing is, is the only, the only reason I think that aunt Bev would dismiss this case is because or, or the only reason that I don't think that she'll dismiss the case is because she hasn't made one sound decision yet. That's the only reason. Logically, like if you're thinking about it, like I, how could she not dismiss this case? You see what I'm saying? But if it goes to trial, the only reason I think that this would go to trial is because I do not believe in any fucking decision making skills in Aunt Bev when it comes to this case. I, I just don't. What? What? Holy shit. Oh my God, bro. It's like, it's, oh my God. People, that shit is just, you gotta, you, you, you gotta appreciate that. You gotta appreciate if this is true. I mean, yeah, let's see what we could find out about that because we might we might even shift. I mean, we'll at least touch on that a little bit. I know I've never really talked about Kate Peters here, but I this this involves the case. It does. If she's charged under the same law that Turtle Boy was charged in, it has to be talked about. I have to go over it. I have to to to, to address this. Um, <laughs> but man, if that's <laughs> fascinating absolutely fucking fascinating this is the craziest fucking case ever <laughs> exactly cherry as we expect she will be he knows that he and his office will remain in the crosshairs of the federal investigation and it's important to note your honor both sides have been made aware multiple times that as uh, we have this hearing today that federal investigation is still open so there's a federal investigation of the investigators in this case, right? And the defense is using some of that information from that federal investigation, including uh, an accident reconstruction expert, um, someone who looked at the Google search. But let's, let's, let's break through that for a second and just take a step back. This is the way I want you to look at this case, right? Because the prosecution is making an allegation against Karen Reed, but Karen Reed is making an allegation against all the people in that house. If you were a prosecutor and you had the choice of which case to bring to trial, which one would you take to trial? Would you go I mean, to trial against the people in the house or against? This is a fantastic fucking question. Vinny. Oh, man, Vinny. Yeah, I'm a believer now, dude. For real. I, I am a believer. Because the prosecution is making an allegation against Karen Reed, but Karen Reed is making an allegation against all the people in that house. If you were a prosecutor and you had the choice of which case to bring to trial, which one would you take to trial? Would you go to trial against the people in the house or against Karen Reed? There it is. Where is there more evidence in this case? Where is there more evidence? I get it. Evidence. It's a tough case to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. That is exactly... 150% the kind of fucking question I want to hear coming out of court TV. 
when I when I watch a case being covered by court TV, that's the kind of question I want asked when it comes to a case like this. Vinny, Vinny. I mean, I'm just handing these out tonight, but. Yeah, good job, Vinny. Oh, right. Reasonable doubt is just raining all over the place. They can still win, but there's a lot of opportunity for that reasonable doubt. But look at it a different way, because they're saying not only did she not do it, we know who did it. And they're right in that house and the evidence is there. So wh where's there more evidence? Let's bring the think tank. Joining us tonight in Seattle, Washington. Trial attorney, fellow of the American College. Now, I see in chat, you guys are like, this panel sucks, because a lot of you guys have already seen this. Uh, I haven't watched this yet, so. But <laughs> you guys are like, this panel sucks. <laughs> we'll see. Let me, let's, let's, let's give it a chance. College of trial lawyers and Bremner, also with us in West Palm Beach, Florida, where it's always warm. Trial attorney, <laughs> former police lieutenant Rick King, and in Cleveland, Ohio, retired judge, former prosecutor, and judicial fellow at the National Judicial College, Judge Gail Byers. Great to see everyone. And Bremner, you're a former prosecutor. Which case would you rather prosecute? The case against Karen. Now, if I had to guess, Court TV has a has a has a track record, okay, of bringing on panelists who just kind of familiarize themselves with a case quickly. Hey, we want to know what you think about the Karen Reed uh, trial that may or may not happen. We want to know about this. Have you guys looked into this? Uh, I know a little bit about it. Okay, well, come on and talk about it. Okay, well then, then they read a few articles and they maybe go through a a, a motion, a recent motion or two. Uh, but these, you can tell by the way that these people say, <laughs> by the way that they talk about the case, that they have not actually done like a deets on the streets deep dive. You know what I mean? Like they, they have not done this. So, but it's interesting because I'm wondering if this is going to be the first time that Vinnie Politan actually did more familiarization with himself of this case than the people that he brought on panel with him. I'm wondering if that happened here. Aaron uh, Reed or the case against the people in the house? Uh, I, I would say Karen Reed, hands down. Why? All the evidence points to her. And you think about, you know, who else has a motive in this case? You've got the physical evidence. I don't care about her supporters. I mean, some of those people. See right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> first of all, um, <laughs> first of all, boy, cunt. You have not read any of the documentation. You have not. Uh, you you have not familiarized yourself with this case at all because there's there's motive. In fact, in fact, the people who think that Karen Reed is guilty have created a motive for inside that house most recently by bringing up this alleged affair between Higgins and Karen Reed. But Higgins was inside this house. Higgins also uh, destroyed his cell phone. Higgins also called... Uh, What's his face <laughs> at 222 just before I'm having a braid fart uh, at 222 just before the Jennifer McCabe Google search of how long to die in cold. So, I mean, so, I mean, the Commonwealth brought this in. They, they, they've created this, this motive for inside the house because I don't give a shit what anybody says. Higgins has more motive, more opportunity than Karen Reed did with that SUV, especially with the evidence that we know of when it comes to the SUV, especially when with the evidence that that none none of which is reliable based on the handling of the evidence, based on the the cust the, the chain of custody of the evidence. None of it is reliable. So this woman has not familiarized herself with the case. People in there, we've all seen that in trials where they can actually be more of a hindrance 
been a help to a defense, at least for me as a defense attorney. But I, I think that, you know, everything in this case, you might have a slick lawyer and everything else, but it appoints to her. Because here's the question, who else would have done this? Who else had a motive? You know, where, who else has evidence pointed strong <laughs> Karen Reed or the people coming out? Karen Reed. According to the Hi, Constitution. Rick I won't ask you to be the prosecutor, but as a defense Cause attorney. Because I, I, I don't fucking know if Karen had an affair with somebody. or I don't care. But if you're trying to say that that's a motive, well, then that gives Higgins more motive than it gives Karen Reed. Because he has more opportunity. attorney okay as a defense attorney who would you rather defend against charges karen reed or the people in the house the 13 people in the house because there's 13 people they got to put a case on i mean they got to pick every single person in there had to play a part somehow and they have to figure out how who did what how they did it and put a case on all of them so for me give me them 13 people every day all right judge gail byers uh you said that's a fair answer that's a fair answer and he didn't claim to know anything about the case. He's just like, all right, so there's 13 people. That means that 13 people have to get their story straight, right? He's not taking into, to, into account that there was, uh, thank you, Cherry, I will in a second. Um, he's not taking into account that that these people all personally knew each other. He's not taking into account uh, that that they knew that they were personally involved with the investigators. He's not taking into, a, taking into account that... Um, They've had two years to get their story straight. He's not taking into account any of these things. None of these things. Okay. So I, I, I'm not blaming him because if you just, if you give me no information and then you tell me who would I rather defend the 13 people or the one lady in court? Fuck. Yeah. My chances as a lawyer, I'm going to fucking defend the 13 people. And I'm going to be like, dude, Right there, just that 13 people, you're, you're accusing 13 people of a conspiracy. I can poke holes in that shit all fucking day. Like, I can guess that I can poke holes in that shit all day. So I don't blame that attorney there in West Palm for thinking that. That's, that makes perfect sense. But if he familiarized himself with the case... It'd be a different story, I believe. Sat on the bench, but you also have been a prosecutor. Which which case is stronger, right? Because it's clear allegations going from one side to the other. By the way, her attorney, Alan Jackson, was an amazing prosecutor in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Prosecuted right. the guy with the funny hair, Phil Spector. <laughs> Phil Spector, the <laughs> legendary music producer. He won that case. Okay, so Judge, who would you... Who, if you want, you know, you got two files in the office, which one are you grabbing to run down to the courtroom to begin the prosecution? Uh, let me tell you, it is, I think, monumentally difficult to try a case with 13 defendants. It is very difficult. Now, now, as a prosecutor, we all know, you know, usually you do a little bit of wheeling and dealing. So the first to squeal gets the deal. However, if you only have one person like Karen Reed, where there seems to be a mountain of evidence that points to this person in particular. Not, though. There may be something that um, something to be said about prosecuting that case singularly, as opposed to dealing with thirteen different. Again, I'm not going to hold it against him. That's something that I would, you know, maybe hold against court TV only for not. I mean, but who, who are they going to bring on? <laughs> you know what I mean? They have their people that they like to reference. They have their people that they like to panel with. They know, um, but. It, it, it doesn't mean that these people have familiarized themselves with this case the way that we all have. So, you know, I'm not going to hold this against them. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to hold it against them based on what little they know. What they're saying is sound. <laughs> if you don't know shit about this case and you're just going by, okay, well, she says the, the defendant says that there's 13 people. And I would assume that the prosecution is not going to try to prosecute someone unless they have a mountain of evidence, unless they feel they have an airtight case. That is a fair assumption to make, but that's not the case here. That is one of the things that actually surprised me going into this case. I thought, how in the hell 
could this prosecution move forward with this case with such little with with so much doubt yes they have evidence but none of the evidence is reliable that's the issue and you would have to familiarize yourself with the case in order to know that in order to draw the conclusion that none of this evidence is actually reliable and why it's not reliable then you're going to assume that the prosecution the commonwealth is doing their job and holding up justice and not doing something completely and totally fucking unethical like raping the rights the first amendment rights and the sixth amendment rights i think it's a sixth amendment i don't know um of of of, of a woman who is on tr about to face a trial being accused of a crime being accused of murdering her boyfriend a boston police officer so uh, this is not, I mean, there's no way, <laughs> there's just no fucking way that they're going to assume this going into it. I, I didn't even assume it. I was like, wait a minute. Because I thought, okay, well, I'm going to see the way that Dietz and Chasing explained it to me were like, okay, you, you do have to look at the documents. You can't just read articles and familiarize yourself with this case. But yeah, if you look at it, you'll see it, it, she's probably innocent. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But what I didn't expect to find was that every piece of evidence that the Commonwealth was trying to use to convict her was full of doubt. That they never even really had a case in the first place. That it's a miracle that it even got past the grand jury. That's something that I just did not expect to, 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 to hear, to read. So, of course, these experienced litigators are not going to sit here and assume right off the bat that there's no real evidence against Karen Reed. They're going to they're going to they're going to assume that the district attorney is acting on at a very ethical capacity. But they're not. <laughs> they're just not. So I don't blame them for thinking these things. They're going, oh, well, give me the 13 people to defend. Of course. You're telling me this woman's already on, uh, already facing trial? I mean, that's easy. Defendants on the other side where any number of things can go wrong or sideways. So I take care and read all day long. Okay. So that's uh, looking at this, I think, from a perspective of, okay, where's there more evidence? Now let's talk about what's going to happen in April, which is a trial. And obviously trials, it's about burden of proof for the prosecution beyond any and all reasonable doubt. There you go. Um, what are your thoughts there, Ann Bremner? Is this case reigning reasonable doubt, like I said? Okay. I don't know if it's like showering, like reasonable doubt. It could be drizzling like we have here in Seattle or a little bit of rain. <laughs> the whole fucking case is reasonable doubt. The whole case, lady. But, you know, the, the, I, I still come back to the fact that if, when you've got the evidence, you know, that, that, that she's got the motive, you know, that he's a cop, doesn't matter. You know, there's nobody else. There, it's not a case you can say that other people did it definitively. I, I think that she's got problems in this. And, and I, I just don't, I don't know how she, they get around the evidence in this case by putting it other people, you know, especially when. Well, okay. I would take her seriously if she gave me any one fucking example of the evidence against Karen Reed. But I don't imagine that she will. <laughs> Like when Melanie Little went up there, she was like, I, I have questions. Why this? Why that? Why that? I mean, in, in, in a matter of, of, of seconds that she's given to explain her part, to have her time to speak, she listed so much as far as why there's doubt. But this woman hasn't given one example of any evidence against Karen Reed. Well, I think the, the key. So I'm, I'm calling bullshit. I don't think she knows what the fuck she's talking about. Evidence that they they rely upon is the the tail light yeah. fragments 
Um, right. The DNA, the cocktail glass that was in the bumper, the tail light fragments that are on his body. Now, Rick King, um, I've listened to Turtle Boy, I've read papers, and it looks like I've listened to Alan Jackson. It seems like there would have to be some planting of the evidence in this. Okay, so, so you guys talking about Kate Peters, like who could she have intimidated um, as far as a witness goes? Well, Turtle Boy is involved in his own case, right? He, there's an open case. Turtle Boy is the victim. I would imagine so. Hell, he's a potential witness for the Karen Reed case. He could absolutely be called up to the stand by the defense, the prosecution. doesn't matter. Prosecution keeps bringing him up. So, <laughs> um, chapter 28, 13A, 13B clearly states that a potential witness could be fucking anybody. <laughs> it could be anybody. Who she intimidated. But getting back to Karen Reed here. Let's see what Vinny said right here. The cocktail glass that was in the bumper. The tail light fragments that are on his body. Now, Rick King, um, I've listened to Turtle Boy. I've read papers. And it looks like I've listened to Alan Jackson. It seems like there would have to be some planting of the evidence in this case. Right. So a jury would have to buy that, Rick. They'd have to buy that. Right. But... The, the beauty of reasonable doubt for defense attorneys. That's not true. The jury wouldn't have to buy that. The jury wouldn't have to buy that. The jury would have to just consider it. That is what you call doubt. Right there. Plain and simple. Once the jury is forced to have to consider that that is a possibility and come to the conclusion that it was a possibility, inevitably because they will, Seeing as there were five undocumented searches, what happened in those searches? How was the evidence handled? Where is the documentation? Where are the notes that no longer exist? So the thing is, Vinny, is you don't have to convince the jury that that evidence was planted. You just have to convince them that it was possible that the evidence was planted and it was absolutely possible that this evidence was planted. It is likely that this evidence was planted considering what we know about the conflict of interest in this case. So yes. Um, if I was a juror, there's no fucking way that that taillight evidence would ever fly with me. I don't give a shit how deadlocked we are. I don't give a shit if we're sequestered. There is no fucking way I'm sending a woman to prison on that evidence. There is no way. That is a straight ticket to hell. There is no way that I would ever contribute to sending a woman to prison for the rest of her life or take any time away from her life with that evidence. attorneys who have it so easy because they don't have the burden wreck no burden <laughs> zero burden right but like to raise a reasonable doubt is just like you know that's like that's like lifting the a, a tiny little dumbbell yeah. right a tiny yeah. little dumbbell is, is reasonable doubt absolutely whereas you got to deadlift a whole bunch of the big plates to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt rick so what are your thoughts right so I, when you talked about this initially, you talked about the FBI investigation. You could tell that Vinny's just trying to like, Vinny, absolutely, it is showing that Vinny has considerably educated himself onto this case, on this case, when it comes to this case. You could tell that he has considerably educated himself. So he's he's trying to like lead the conversation that way. Like, dude, are you guys hearing what I'm saying? When we're talking about doubt, there is so much doubt in this case. Like, he failed the first time. He expected his panelists to know and be familiar with the case. And he went around the panel and he was like, that's not what I was looking for. I'm trying to, like, explain to you guys. Okay, let me remind you that there, <laughs> that the prosecution has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt their case. And the defense only has to prove, uh, only has to prove that there's doubt. 
only has to create doubt. It's 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 an easy job. And this is the third attempt to lead these people to this and get them to drink this water. Lead this horse to this water. Investigating the, the investigators in this case. And there's things that are coming out. Like, since when does the defense lawyer get to get to flaunt the FBI's, you know, results in a case? That's huge. And as that as that investigation develops and you find out what was presented at that grand jury or what evidence they have there, that can only help Karen Reed in this case, the way that it's coming out now. Now, that, that all may change and there may be some different evidence that comes out eventually that we don't know. But as I sit here today, to know that as a defense lawyer, I get to, to, prom, you know, to promptly... Hey, here's the thing. You know how I know? You know how I know that there is no inculpatory evidence in that FPI report, in that U.S. Attorney's report. You know how I know that there's nothing in there that they plan on using against Karen Reed? Because they never brought it up in court. They never brought it up yesterday. There was nothing there. They whined about Turtle Boy. They're trying to prove that... Karen Reed is guilty by what? Violating her conditions of release by pulling up to a house with a reporter? By by having conversations with Turtle Boy? That's that somehow makes her guilty of murder? On what planet? Right, Cherry, you're probably right. But what I'm saying is he had the same report. He had the same report that Jackson and Yanetti had, and yet nothing that actually implicates Karen Reed into the murder of John O'Keefe that they could prove beyond a reasonable doubt was brought up yesterday. Nothing. That's how I know they don't have it, because they had the opportunity. That was their that was their chance to defend themselves against the the motion. That was their opposition. No, Your Honor, you don't understand. There's stuff that has been brought to light in this case. The FBI's findings show this. One, the FBI found this, that, this, that. We absolutely plan to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this was Karen Reed. Once this goes to trial, Your Honor, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Jackson and Yanetti dropped bombs as to why they should be disqualified and why the case should be dismissed. But they gave nothing but Turtle Boy and Karen Reed had lunch. Turtle or Karen Reed pulled up to somebody's house. That's not that that's not in opposition to the accusations that were being made. That's not a case against Karen Reed. So this isn't going to happen. Like this, this is going to go to trial. If it does, when this goes to trial, what will happen is they will absolutely fail to present a case. It will be the biggest farce of a trial we have ever seen. I have no doubt in my mind about this at this point. No doubt in my mind. The biggest farce of a trial that we have ever seen. The biggest waste of time and taxpayer money ever. Mm -hmm put in front of the jury the uh, the the testimony of an FBI agent who is standing behind my theory of the case. I, I, I'll take that all day. What's up, Nick Roth? Judge Gail Byer. Uh, I saw your segment on Court TV, man. Great job. Excellent. This this trial, I, I think it's going to happen in April. It's, it's it, you know, unless they win this motion to dismiss, which I doubt, or there's some unexpected delay, the judge wants to try this case. What are your thoughts about reasonable doubt 
um, for Karen Reed. So, Vinny, first, I agree with you. I sincerely doubt the defense will win their motion to dismiss the indictment wholesale. And because the bar is so low for an indictment, which is probable cause, um, I think that is probably the strongest likelihood for why that indictment won't be, be dismissed. Because remember, you only have to you know, show was crime committed? Is this likely the person that committed the crime? That's just to get the indictment. And as you said, once you get to a pettit jury or the jury that we are used to seeing in a jury trial, you've got a heavier lift. And I actually think that, yeah, there is an awful lot of reasonable doubt that keeps trickling out. And what's more, if I were the prosecution, I might begin to get a little bit concerned about jury tainting or tainting the jury pool, given all of the um, media exposure that this case has gotten. Because remember, those same people that are standing outside are perhaps some of the same people or they're connected in the same town to some of the same people who are going to be picked to sit in this jury. And I think very few are going to be able to say they've not seen or heard or know something about this case and that they're completely objective and have formulated no opinion whatsoever. And all you need is one person. That's all I ever say. And I think that the defense is angling for that one person in these pretrial motions, and they are setting it up for the win before they ever do their opening statements. Like I, mean, I said, it's so much easier for the defense. That's that's right. That's a fact. That's that's my answer right there. That's my answer to anybody who says that Karen Reed will be found guilty and go to prison. Karen Reed's not going to prison. The question is, is whether or not other people are going to go to prison or not to answer for John O'Keefe's death. That's that's it. But it is not a question that Karen Reed is going to prison because she is not. There is absolutely no way. They are setting up for a win before they even get to trial. That is a fact. And what's funny is it's the prosecution's fault. It's the investigator's fault. The only thing that they're going to win by tr in trial is by saying hey who handled this evidence where's the documentation for this evidence what did you do with the evidence where are the notes where are the signatures on these statements i mean that's that's not that's not the defense's fault that's not being, that's not slick lawyering. That's, that's defense 101, I would assume. I mean, that's first year public defender shit. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that you can, if you're a juror, there's no fucking way that you can convict on what little you have. On what little the, the the prosecution has, there's no way you could ever convict on that. Oh my goodness, no! <laughs> Look what you did. I think we got a super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. <laughs> Lori Cabral. Love your show, Will. Free Karen Reed. Agree. Free Karen Reed. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, and Scott's saying, where's the crime scene photos? Where's the DNA evidence from the scene? Where's John's clothing? Where's the videos? I mean, dude, it's to the point where if it's to the point where if the prosecution were on trial or uh, sorry, if the investigators were on trial for how they conducted this investigation, they would be fuck. They would be fucked. There's so much: the red solo cups, the leaf blower. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's there's way too much. You cannot sit there with a straight face and say that the fucking prosecution has an airtight case or that they even might have an airtight case. You cannot, with a brain and a straight face, say that the Commonwealth has an airtight case against Karen Reed. That there's even a chance of it. I 
It's it, mind blowing, dude. That's Rick. You just need one. You just need one. It's not like the prosecution. We need all 12. You just need one. And you say, yeah, we won the case. All right. Think Vinny's saying exactly what I've been saying from the beginning. Tank with us. They're not going anywhere. Up next. Scott Peterson with the help of the LA Innocence Project this time. Scott Peterson, man. I think he's going to get out. Man, you motherfuckers are going to lose your shit when that happens, too. Uh, I think he's going to get out. I have doubts. Dude. I'm going to make another pot of coffee. We got a lot to go over, people. We're going to be here for a minute. Attorney's office has known for four months which specific items of discovery we are requesting. We gave them references to Bates pages. We gave them references to where in the police reports the items we're requesting are, are referred okay, to. Not... We, um, we were very, very specific. We spent a case. lot of time trying right. to... This is another case. Let's go over. Let's let's start on. Uh, <laughs> let's start on. Let's just do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> There you go. Ooh, you suck. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> True crime enthusiast. You know, it's so interesting uh, when I do my podcast, which hopefully uh, some of you have maybe been able to have time to catch. I always, I'm so excited to interview my guest and I start out with welcome true crime enthusiasts, but uh, I guess this live uh, isn't exactly, exactly that vibe uh, because today I just wanted to um, address the hearing on the Karen Reed case. And uh, the reason is, I think it was very important when I started seeing some of the things flying around and uh, I was busy today, so I was what I call quick tweeting, uh, where I respond, but kind of quickly and curtly. And sometimes the message okay. may not come across stop. exactly stop. right. Stop, 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 you lying motherfucker, stop. The first thing you fucking did was trash talk Turtle Boy. He read them live. While we were on the heat, while we were streaming the hearing on his channel, he was reading the tweets about him that you wrote. Like, stop, stop it, and straight up lies. That I mean, dude, that shit is fucking crazy to me. That that you like, you were so fucking heated. This. This little fucking facade that you're playing right now of, oh, well, you know, I had a lot of stuff to do today and I was just busy, um, you know, and I just, just kind of jump tweeted and just kind of, no, you were watching that hearing with bells on. And as soon as things were being said that you knew were going to make you look like the asshole that you are, you started tweeting shit about Turtle Boy. Because he read them live while we were going over the hearing. While we had just, right after we had just gone over the hearing. So stop it right now. I always use the analogy. One time a friend of mine reached out to me and said, uh, I'm homesick. And I didn't know whether she was homesick or Homesick, meaning she missed her home. So a lot is missed sometimes with writing. So I thought I'd just go live and address uh, the hearing from today. Um, so first. You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. 
<laughs> Facts, Big Groover. First, for those who may not know much about the Karen Reed case, uh, I should call it the John O'Keefe case. Karen Reed is the individual accused of the second degree murder of John O'Keefe. But let me just quickly go over the facts that aren't in dispute. Those facts are that Karen Reed and John O'Keefe went out for a night of drinking. Uh, they were dating and had been in a long-term relationship and um, they were going to their second bar and they hooked up with a bunch of friends. And when they were there, they were invited to a second location. Uh, I should point out, for those who don't know, John O'Keefe uh, was a Boston police officer and the house they were invited to was Brian. Al I mean, yeah. It's 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 interesting how you forgot that, you know, that, uh, you know, oh, I forgot to mention, I should mention he was a Boston police officer. I mean, little miss, let me tweet about how we're all forgetting that this is about John O'Keefe, right? Because I saw I've seen those tweets, too. We're forgetting that this is about John O'Keefe. And then you start talking about John O'Keefe and then it turns into something about Turtle Boy. Every time. Every time. So stop with your bullshit. You don't give a shit about John O'Keefe. You don't give a shit about your own breed of law enforcement investigators. You don't even care. You're a bad look. Albert's house. He was also a Boston police officer. So Karen Reed and John O'Keefe get in Karen Reed's Lexus and they head across town uh, to the home of Brian Albert. That's where the facts uh, have different standpoints and viewpoints, depending on whether you believe uh, the defense notions or whether you believe the prosecution's notions. So first I'll go quickly through the prosecution. The prosecution believes that when they arrived, uh, they had been in a heated argument between when they were at the bar and when they were driving. And so because they were in this uh, heated argument and they had both been drinking very heavily, um, what happened was in Karen Reed's rage and anger, uh, and they have messages that have been recorded to show this, in fact, where she says she hates him, uh, that in her rage, she backed up, hit uh, John O'Keefe, hurting him. Now, do I need to remind you all about my thoughts on a woman <laughs> saying that she hates her boyfriend drunk in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't think I do. Let's just move on. It was a freezing cold night, uh, actually the night of a prolific blizzard uh, that was beginning and that went through the night into the early morning hours. And ultimately he was left there and he died. He died of both his injuries and it was exacerbated by hypothermia being in the cold. Uh, the prosecution also believes that she was, they were in a bad relationship. Uh, the relationship was coming to a close uh, in part due to the children uh, that he had adopted when his sister and brother-in-law passed unexpectedly. And she felt uh, resentment regarding uh, taking care of them often. And also she was uh, starting or trying to start up a relationship with an ATF agent named Brian Higgins. Interesting, because again, Jennifer Koffendoffer, what that does is play into my original very loose theory that I had before. It gives Matt McCabe motive. It does. If you're stating that that. Karen was bitter about the time that she was spending with Jen McCabe. And they're arguing that he went inside that house with not one, but two people that according to you in the prosecution would have motive to kill him. You're still going with Karen Reed did it. Makes no sense. Based on your logic. 
based on your logic, there were two people inside that house that had motive to kill John O'Keefe. Not just one. Two people. So, I find that interesting. Yes, there were about 50 text messages uh, between them. There were some romantic text messages. Apparently, she kissed him. Things along this line. So, uh, the prosecution believes they have their motive, and um, it was exacerbated again by the night of drinking. <laughs> that's the prosecution side. The defense says, no, that's not what happened. What happened was Karen Reed uh, dropped off John O'Keefe at Brian Albert's house, and uh, Brian Alberts, whose son was having a birthday, he was there with his son, his wife, a uh, lady uh, named Jim yeah. McKay. Third person with motive, by the way her husband uh, and um, their other daughter. Uh, and it was a really small gathering. Uh, there was also a nephew that had originally been there, but wasn't there by the time that Karen Reed pulled up. Uh, Colin Albert is his name. He had already left, uh, according to the prosecution. The defense says he hadn't left. Um, so in any event, uh, the defense theory is that when he was inside the house, some sort of altercation uh, started and basically they beat John O'Keefe to death and they threw him out on Brian o or Brian Albert's front lawn, right on the curtilage on the far left side of the house oh, as you're facing the house. The cars park on the right and he was thrown out on the left. So that, in a nutshell, is the defense's side as well as the prosecution side. But I'm really uh, wanted to focus this particular live stream to talk about what happened during the um, hearing today. So the hearing today was supposed to be a motions hearing that discussed all the motions on the table uh, regarding the case. So no, uh, no, it that wasn't. was originally what was intended. But no, no. Today was supposed to be a motions. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a hearing to address the motion to disqualify and dismiss. That's it. That's that's what it was set to do. But after Judge Canone saw the uh, huge amount of information that was given to her. And I wrote this down, uh, 50 pages uh, from the defense concerning this motion to dismiss the indictment. And I saw things flying around, uh, you know, people were thinking he wasn't even indicted, but, or she wasn't even indicted, but Karen Reed stands charged and accused of second degree murder and was indicted. So essentially what's happening is and we also, they are trying to... And, and we learned from this hearing yesterday that the indictment was based on lies, that the grand jury was lied to by the investigators. Dismiss. The defense is trying to dismiss the indictment using the Odell standard, which is basically saying uh, that the evidence was so distorted when it went before the grand jury uh, that that is why a true bill was returned. Right. A true bill is basically saying you're indicted. When you go into a grand jury, one or when a grand jury convenes, one of three things can really happen. One is that the prosecutor presents evidence period. over a period of time, and then they <laughs> ask the grand jury, uh, is this uh, a, a true bill or no bill? In other words, is there enough evidence to indict or charge? That's all indict means, really, and charge the individual based on all of this information that's been presented to you. If they the grand jury votes and uh, they uh, vote for an indictment, the person is indicted and a true bill, which shows the charges, is issued. They can also enter a no bill, which means, no, we didn't think the prosecution had enough evidence and we're no billing. And where the joke comes in a lot of times is some people think, well, you can indict, I think the word is a chicken sandwich or a ham sandwich in a grand jury. 
That's not really exactly I mean, yeah. true. Uh, having <laughs> been in so many grand juries over the years, too many to count uh, See, time that, and time again in case. That scares the shit out of me. The idea of her getting to decide if somebody gets charged with a crime, I mean, scares the shit out of me. And she's, I mean, she's former FBI. <laughs> I mean, she's former FBI. That scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Cases, because Jesus. typically when it's a grand jury investigation, you go on a weekly basis. The grand jury is always existing. And they're not only hearing your case, they're hearing all sorts of other cases, unless it's a special grand jury convened just for a particular case. But usually it's a grand jury that's hearing case after case after case, uh, weeks on end, oh, shit. Uh, regarding all these different crimes. Wait, so what? Are you guys serious? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me see what we can find here. I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, Boston 25. Is it live? Or... No, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, let me look up the... Hold on. Give me a second, folks. I'm just looking to see. Uh, Cherry, I hope you're looking as well. Um, so what the fuck is being, is, is there just a whole shit ton of like shit being handed down right now? I'm not seeing anything about Proctor here. Hold on. Let me look at chat real quick. Oh, okay. It was on the live news. All right. So, Cherry, keep checking on that. We're going to keep going here, but what? Yo, like, Proctor is being investigated. Um, and it's an administrative suspension. It's just an administrative suspension. Well, of course, I mean, they have to investigate, but they also can't let them operate if they're, <laughs> um, so before we, okay. Yeah. I, I would assume now we don't know anything yet. Okay. I don't know anything. I want to be very clear about that. I don't know anything yet, but a suspension sounds pretty standard to me if he is under investigation. You can't just allow the guy to fucking operate, uh, depending on the severity of what he's being investigated for. So, um, yeah, administrative suspension is a huge deal. That is a reprimand. That is a professional reprimand. Um, I'm looking at Boston Fox 25. I'm not seeing anything, guys. Um Like, it's weather right now, so. Yeah, it's weather right now. Can I rewind it? No. No, I can't rewind it. All right, let's get back to cough and twat. We'll wait patiently when we get more information, folks. But the second I get more information, let me check. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. good idea. Hold on. Let me check. Let me check. Ted Daniels.
we go. Ted Daniel News. Um, I'm not seeing anything yet. Just a lot of tweets about yesterday. But I'm not seeing any um, reports from him. Uh, let me try this. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, per Ted Daniels, Michael Proctor is officially under investigation by Internal Affairs of Massachusetts State Police. That's uh, Turtle Boy's tweet. Um, so let's just sit tight. Let's sit tight until we could see a an official report, guys. We'll do that. Let's continue listening to this idiot, and then we'll get back to that as soon as more information comes, okay? In any event, one of those two options can happen. But the third option that happens quite often is that, uh, you know, uh, information is presented and so on and so forth, but the prosecutor never asks uh, for a true bill or a no bill consideration. And so that can, you know, happen. it's funny is so knowing those this, are the three. It's not coincidence people like let, let, let's just clear that up right now. I don't even give a shit what the details are. It is not, I'm calling it. It is not a coincidence that Proctor is now being suspended and investigated by internal affairs of the Massachusetts state police. And this hearing took place yesterday where these things, these findings of the FBI uh, investigation and the U.S. Attorney's investigation have come to light. It is not a coincidence that these things were presented in open court and publicly addressed, and now Proctor is now being in officially investigated. This is not a coincidence. No fucking way. Three options that typically happen whenever a grand jury is convened. Okay. So this, just to let you know, is what this hearing was about today. I think it got really confusing as to what this hearing was about. That see, this, this is this this is an interesting tactic too that these manipulative these manipulative assholes like to do is they like to put up smoke and mirrors and they try to make things more confusing than what they are. It wasn't confusing at all. I wasn't confused in the slightest bit. I have no law enforcement experience and I have no uh attorney experience i have no experience in the law so i was sitting there on turtle boy's channel with him and brian from ltl true crime we were watching this hearing and at no point was i confused by anything that was happening they were put there <laughs> by judge bev given just over a week to prepare a presentation and address findings of the FBI and reasons why they feel that Karen Reed's case should be dismissed and that Karen Reed's uh, and, and that the Norfolk County DA's office should be disqualified. So that wasn't confusing at all, especially the, the things that, that Alan Jackson and David Unetti presented. What's up? What's up, Olivia? It's good to see you. A lot of shit going down, people. I love that I'm live for it. I love it because I like to find these things out with you guys. I love I love to, 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 to I, I love to do reactions. So I'm here for it. Just found out that Proctor uh, is being investigated, uh, and he is suspended. So, yeah. As Deet said, the chickens is coming home to roost, y'all. That's what it was about. 
whether there was enough probable cause in the grand jury to support uh, uh, this indictment or whether this indictment should be overturned. OK, so uh, in addition to the 50 pages that the defense put forth, they supplemented it with another 15 pages. Then the prosecution supplemented with another 15. Then there was 30 pages uh, regarding the sanctions that they want invoked. In other words, they want the district attorney uh, removed from this case for the actions they feel. Uh OK. Says here, Ted Daniels News, uh, 25 investigates has confirmed Massachusetts State Police Internal Affairs has opened an investigation into Trooper Michael Proctor. He's the lead investigator on the Karen Reed case. Um, the Massachusetts State Police Internal Affairs Unit is investigating a state police detective for a potential violation of department policy. Uh, in connection with the Karen Reed murder case. Okay, so this is absolutely directly connected to the Karen Reed murder case. I'm going to read that again. The Massachusetts State Police Internal Affairs Unit has is investigating a state police detective for a potential violation of department policy in connection with the Karen Reed murder case. I wonder if it was planning evidence. 25 investigates learned of the internal affairs investigation uh, Wednesday one day after a hearing for Karen Reed, the woman accused in the death of her boyfriend, Boston police officer, John O'Keefe, her defense argued that detective Michael Proctor was not truthful with his relationship with people. He has identified as witnesses in the case. According to the defense, Proctor admitted this to a federal grand jury. The defense also says text messages analyzed in the federal investigation revealed that one of the other witnesses offered to buy Proctor a gift when the case uh, when the case against Reed was over, <laughs> state police tell 25 investigates that Trooper Proctor remains on full active duty amid the investigation. So he is not suspended, people. He is not suspended. Uh, on Wednesday, Reed's lawyers filed a request for information from the state police internal affairs unit. The substance of that request is unknown because the defense has asked it to be sealed by the court. Okay. Um, so today they filed a request for information from the state police Inf internal affairs unit. So whatever it is, it's the defense actually asked for it to be sealed. So I don't know how much we're going to find out folks. I really don't know exactly how much we're going to find out now. This could be nothing. Uh, it could be just to satisfy the crowd. Okay. We're looking into it. I mean, somebody above Proctor cannot have that information put to them. Internal affairs cannot receive that report and, and not look into it. You know what I mean? So it could just be, it, could, it might, the planning of evidence might not even be uh, an issue. So um, what they're talking about is obviously what was brought up in court yesterday. So it could just be the receiving of a gift. And if that proves to be absolutely nothing, then it proves to be absolutely nothing. But the fact is, is that he lied. Now he admitted to the grand jury that he had a relationship with, <laughs> with the McCabe's. So, Yeah, I mean, the feds have already been looking into it. So what I'm guessing is now what what Ted Daniel reported was just based on what we know. Like, it doesn't say that that is what he's being investigated for. He's just saying, basically, what we do know is that this happened in court and that could be what he's being investigated for. But the truth is, we don't know what he's being investigated for by internal affairs. We have to assume that it's probably that because that's clearly, clearly damning. But as far as what we don't know, could be anything. Could be anything. Um, so I'm not going to jump to the conclusion that Michael Proctor is going down just yet, people. Let's stop foaming at the mouth. We don't know what they have. And like I said, it could be that it just 
Michael Proctor came across the right guy's desk or the right lady's desk. And they said, you know what? We got to look into this. He's still remaining on full active duty. It would be different if he actually was suspended. But if he remains on full active duty, they're probably just doing a little bit of an inquiry and that's it. And it's probably nothing. Who knows? Um, but considering what we do know, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to safely guess that they'll find something that at least merits suspension. I'm sure. I mean, right. They could just be investigating the bribe. You know, and it might not even be a bribe. <laughs> I mean, again, people, I got to play devil's advocate here. Accepting gifts. I mean, yes, that's against a department policy. Of course, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's this corrupt cop who's getting who's taking bribes. You know what I mean? That's that's, you know, that's it, in my opinion, that's 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 inappropriate and it's wrong and it's against department departmental policy, but it's you know, I mean, and a lot of you are going to get mad at me for this, but it's you know, taking something out of somebody's hand and then they ending up sitting on a couch, and then saying that they got pushed onto a couch. See what I'm saying? So I I I don't know. You don't know the severity of what they're going to find and if they'll find anything. So let's not start blowing our load just yet. Let's just wait. Um, Howie. Okay. Let's do that. Let's go to Howie Carr. turned on the thunderstorms and watched the magic happen. The thunderstorm eliminated the funky odors. But the best part, Candace's husband, who rolled his eyes when she would talk about the thunderstorm, well, he finally it's on commercials right what now, she so was raving wait. about. One of the great parts about the thunderstorm is that it isn't one of those flowery plugins that tries to cover up smell with more smell. You want to get rid of the smells. You want the thunderstorm and you want the three-pack special. <laughs> Fuck that commercial. I mean... Listen, I'm with you. All I'm, I, I have to play devil's advocate and present the, 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 the obvious possibilities, people. Uh, you know what I mean? Now, if you're asking me what I believe, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Because I have to also ask the question, what the fuck took internal affairs so goddamn long? And... If I have to question whether or not internal affairs ever gave a shit, then I have to question what they're going to find. See what I'm saying? So. All right, hold on. Not into evidence, but they were brought up publicly yesterday uh, showing that uh, the FBI with the uh, Experts think uh, that she, that John O'Keefe was not killed by a car, and that they're all sort. And that now they uh, they also found all these text messages between Michael Proctor, the state cop, who's uh, in charge of the investigation, uh, between some of the McAlberts, the people that uh, that O'Keefe and Karen Reed were partying with that night. And uh, so this afternoon, just now, uh, Channel 25 is reporting Massachusetts State Police, the Internal Affairs Unit, is investigating the detective Proctor. Again, this is Channel 25. And uh, Proctor has admitted to a federal grand jury, according to uh, what was said in publicly in court yesterday, that he uh, he did exchange, he did know the, these, uh, these wit witnesses that he should have been investigating, or he was supposed to be investigating, and that he misled uh, people in the in uh, hires up 
about uh, his relationship with them and that they uh, one of the uh, witnesses offered to buy Proctor a gift when the case against Reed was over. This guy is the lead investigator in this this case. This woman is charged with murder and the FBI says she couldn't have murdered the guy with the, her boyfriend Get with him, the car because he wasn't killed by a car. Get him, Howie. On Wednesday, Reed's lawyers filed a request for information from the state police internal affairs unit. The request uh, of that, the substance of that request is unknown because the defense has asked it be sealed by the court. Joining us now to uh, to talk about this latest uh, development is uh, Aiden Kearney, a.k.a. Turtle Boy. This is a pretty, pretty big story, isn't it, uh, Aiden? Things are moving fast. Yeah, I think the beginning of the end is coming Uh, this should have happened a long, long time ago. This has all been out there. The state police know it. Uh, what I'm worried about is that they will just have a fall guy. He'll be the fall guy, and that's it. You know, you remember a few years ago, Leah Genduso, you know, got on there. You know, we, we, I broke that story about her right. being a former drug dealer. Yep. On. Somebody's got to fall on their sword. That. Her. No, not the people who hired her. Who got right. her on there? Who looked past all that? Yeah, they all got huge pensions. One of them's working for Sean O'Brien now. That the guy that's the head of the Teamsters. It's yeah, yeah. You're right. She was the only right. one who took a fall. Yeah. So like with this, like Michael Proctor, they all knew about Michael Proctor's relationship with the Proctors and uh, with the uh, Alberts and the McCabe's. They and a boy, knew. Turtle Boy. And as much as I want to see Michael Proctor go down, if it's only him going down, then that's an injustice. His yep. bosses, Yuri Buchanan. And Brian Tully, the yep. lieutenant who was charging me with witness intimidation, they were both well. That's aware. Morrissey's right hand. What did they do when a journalist started exposing all of this? All of everything I've reported has now been vindicated. And what did they do when I arrested and protested these people? I apologize. When I wrote about and protested these people, they arrested me. They sent the state police fugitive unit to my house to arrest me in front of my kids. Yeah, if Tully doesn't go down, do, I don't have any hope. I asked you last night, do we know who Proctor told? Did he did he tell the state grand jury that he had no relationship to the uh, McAlberts? Or do do we know That's that right. yet? Yeah, so he, uh, well, he, it's, according to what we heard yesterday, he minimized his relationship with the, uh, Pro, with the Alberts and the McCabes, um, I, I, I guess, in front of the, the, the state grand jury. That would be the only place he would have. Able right, to make, to and so then the up. feds, but with case, with the feds brought him in to Moakley court to the Moakley courthouse, they they already had the the uh, the text messages, so they so he knew and he knew he was jammed up if he if he lied, so he right. told the truth. Right, right, and in my case, you know, we've seen that Lieutenant Tully was asked specifically uh, at a grand jury about whether or not Michael Proctor had a relationship with the Alberts. And he specifically said, no, he lied. And that's why I ended up getting indicted, because these people lied. It's not just Proctor covering things up. It's Buchanan. It's that's Tully. the state. It's that's Fanning. the state grand jury. He lied to you're saying Tully. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In my case. And how do you how do you know you weren't there? How do, how do you know he lied to the to the grand jury? Because that's what the this is all documented. OK, OK. So listen to this. State police tell 25 investigates that Trooper Proctor remains on full active duty amid the investigation. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly. pretty funny, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine that, he, you know, all the cases he's involved in, if this is all true, they're all going to be thrown out. Every pending case, they are going to be appeals on all the ones he got convictions on. They're not, I don't believe they're going to let him contaminate any more cases if, uh, if, if this is all uh going to pan out the way it appears to be panning out i mean is he still investigating the reed case it's like is he because that's still ongoing there's still uh, there he, he he remains on full active on. duty that's what this that's what i guess david procopio at the state police told uh told channel 25 tonight well i don't think that's gonna that can't possibly last <laughs> too long I mean, if they do an actual internal investigation what's the over so what's the over under on the day he 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 files to, for retirement. I'm going to guess Tuesday. That, what? He's only been on for less than 10 years. Oh, well, disability. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a pension if you retired now, but uh, you know, 
uh, he's got bigger fish to worry about than that right now. I mean, he's got, look at a federal. Oh, there's no, there's no bigger fish to fry for the state police than a pension. <laughs> Make like a tree you know and get that. out of here. That's true. <laughs> well, he. <laughs> that's true. But if I were him, I'd be worried about a lot more than just my pension. Yeah. Well, listen. You got another. I. I don't want to hold you long. I know you got other stuff to do, do tonight. What? What's the situation? You are going into court tomorrow, correct? Yeah, that's correct. What? Uh, and, uh, we'll see. They're going to try to revoke on some BS that I was at the courthouse at the last read hearing. And uh, the person who made up a lie about assault and battery and the charges were dropped, uh, they have an order on me. And they showed up with Jennifer McCabe as like a human shield for the first time. I've never come to a case before. Ejected me from the courtroom. I left. I went where the officers told me to. I told them about the, the, the uh, order being in place. And now they're trying to say that came within 100 yards that's a violation so they're trying to jam me up on that wow they, they don't give up do they and the corruption never ends they think the corruption never ends so we'll see but wait, we have my lawyers we're well prepared we're gonna fight this and uh hopefully it doesn't end up like last, like last time and it's first uh it's first thing in the morning right yeah nine o'clock that's right nine o'clock in dedham dedham district that's correct yeah all right, uh, Turtle Boy, con- uh, you know, congratulations on your victory yesterday. And this is a, uh, you know, like you say, the, uh, the the dominoes are starting to tumble now. Yes, yes, they are, one after another. Hopefully he starts ratting on his superior. Yeah, that's why, that was my, that was going to be my final question. The old mob question, will Proctor stand up? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I were him, I'd say, I would just say, oh, I told them all about it. I told them, they knew all about it. That's what I the the answer... The answer to that question, Turtle Boy, as you know, is always no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Nobody yeah. takes the fall anymore. All right. Uh, Aiden Turtle Boy Kearney, congratulations and good luck tomorrow in court. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. 844-500-4242. It's pretty serious, though, that the state police have already admitted that they have the investigation. I mean, I know they, you know, oh, he's still on full active. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what? as dumb as michael passed the gravy morrissey and his <laughs> gang of hack minions in quincy are they're not dumb yeah. enough to have uh proctor working on any i more love this guy when, uh, when all this uh this right excrement is falling down around his, his right uh, himself and all of his pals say shit how he say shit and, Eight four four five hundred forty two forty two, and again they according to according to what was said in court yesterday, the uh, the McAl one of the McAlberts uh, said uh, when this is all o- we really appreciate the way you're handling this investigation and when uh, when this is all over we want to get you a nice gift, and he he responded in writing according according to the the documents that are they're still under seal but they were talked about in court yesterday by the defense, Karen Reed's attorneys. He he responded when they said they were going to buy him a gift. Uh, maybe you better buy it for my wife, Elizabeth, instead. Yeah, you covered your tracks, man. <laughs> That's why you're a detective <laughs> working for Michael Morris. The, this uh, guy is awesome. The crusading district attorney of, uh, <laughs> of Norfolk County. 844-500-4242, 844-500-4242. Yanetti should file to dismiss. I think they have filed to dismiss. They, they I think have, they filed yeah. to dismiss over and over again. It's just, it's just a, a uh, it's getting harder and harder for even uh, Auntie Bev, the judge uh, hack that she is, second generation hack that she is to, uh, to let this, let's go forward. Uh <laughs> uh we'll uh we'll see what we can uh we'll see we'll have uh we'll have more reports on this tomorrow obviously and i'm sure Grace will have some on, on her show awesome. this, this should be over very quickly uh <laughs> tomorrow morning i, I can't admit i i don't know i i mean again i i i have a pretty significant losing streak in court at, at every level <laughs> in, in every type of court but I, I can't imagine them sending turtle boy back to back to jail on this especially after now that now Proctor is, is jammed up and it didn't take long, did it? 844-500-4242. When we come back, we have some fresh Brandon cuts from, uh, from Milwaukee.
And uh, as usual, he sounds like uh, what made Milwaukee famous has made a loser out of him, even though he doesn't drink. I'm Howie Carr. The Howie Carr Show returns after this. (laughs) That was fantastic. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is uh, coming together, man. Um, and Turtle Boy made an excellent point. Uh, he made a, a fantastic point because he's he's stating that um, he's afraid that this is going to be just Proctor landing on his sword. He's not the real problem. He's part of a very much bigger problem. But Michael Morrissey's office is the problem. Michael Morrissey's office is absolutely the problem. These are just foot soldiers for him. And Proctor is the perfect fall guy. We've even predicted this. Proctor's the perfect fall guy. Because he's the one with the personal relationship. He's the one that probably stands the least unless they could prove that he planted evidence, but he's the one that, that, that will probably get off with a slap on the wrist and say, Oh, look, we took care of the problem. We got it. We, we, we handled it. Everything's good. No, because you've got Tully who is these Tully's the one you got to keep your eye on. As far as the cops go, Tully's the one you got to keep your eye on. Now, not necessarily so much in the Karen Reed investigation, but kind of, kind of. Tully is the one that is always standing right next to Morrissey's side in public. Tully is the one who showed up to Turtle Boy's house. Tully is the one who flew to California to get that bullshit interview with Natalie. Tully's the one to keep your eye on. Tully is is the one to get to use to get to Morrissey. He's the one that you got to use in order to get to Morrissey. Diane, I just saw the Venmo. The Venmo. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Tully is definitely the one that you want to use to get to Morrissey. Because this totally smells the way that Turtle Boy called it out. It totally smells like Proctor being the one to fall on his sword. And then everybody being like, see, we got it. So. All right, let's let's continue to watch this idiot. We'll we'll just have to see how this plays out because I'm not I'm not here celebrating yet. (laughs) There is a group already focusing on licenses and pensions. Okay, nice. Thank you, Brian. Um, Yeah, this is a crazy week. Um, Things are going to start happening, man. And supposedly there were a bunch of Rule 17 motions filed today. Um, So, again, I mean, this has got the ball rolling. This FBI investigation is delivering so far what it is said to deliver. No strays. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Um, yes, we got that. Uh, Fox just reported Proctor is under investigation by his own department. He's under investigation by internal affairs, but holy shit is about to hit the, the, the fan. Get your popcorn ready. Um, oh, my goodness. Yes. Thank you. No strays. I appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. It's it's it was requested, people. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. 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 All right, let's hear let's hear what this idiot says. I love the context now because the context of everything that she's going to probably say, and I haven't even watched this yet, but the context of everything she's probably going to say 
like is going to be so hilarious based on everything that we know now. Uh, <laughs> so this should be fun. We're improper. And then also uh, in response to that, the prosecution had 25 pages and then there were hundreds quote, hundreds, not a hundred, but hundreds of pages of exhibits that were presented by the prosecution. So the judge said on the bench today, listen, I looked at everything. Not I had a chance to kind of go over it. No, she said, I read everything. And she realized in reading she everything say that. that they weren't going to have time, she felt, to do. She didn't say that she read the whole 3,000 page document. all the other motions. She wanted to just stick with this. Now I will tell you, judges often, they will take motions like this and then they will write out their answers, uh, their orders basically, uh, whether the order, whether a motion is granted, whether it's denied. <laughs> so uh, for Judge Canone to always have these hearings is, uh, I don't wanna say it's unusual, it's how she operates. And I find it to be uh, um, a very... Okay, then I'm mistaken. I thought that she said that uh, she read the um, the uh, uh, the motions for uh, the dismissal and the, the, the disqualification, not the, the actual uh, FBI document. Very good thing. I think the public wants to hear particularly in this case right that's what i what thought the balance that's what i mean evidence is what the balance See? of information is and so if it's just these hundreds of pages that are sitting with the judge the public doesn't get to hear that so at least in this way she lets the prosecution and the defense have some time to further <laughs> orally argue well how we she gets and thank you so much uh b fitz um Howie uh, actually is the one who coined the term uh, past the gravy Morrissey. Uh, if you remember, he wrote an article uh, about, um, I think it was Turtle Boy's arrest. Um, and uh, like his initial charge, uh, his initial charges. And, uh, and he, he's, he's the one who said past the gravy Morrissey. So that, that was all Howie Carr. We got to give Howie Carr full credit for the Pass the Gravy Morrissey uh, nickname. <laughs> she gave the defense 10 minutes. They took well longer than that. Um, but uh, in, in the reason for that, I think, was Alan Jackson thought he was going to have longer. So he basically had a book up there that I think he, I think he would have taken an hour or more if he was given that leeway. Uh, he understood that the hearings were going to be all day, but because the judge curtailed it only to an hour, that's what they did. They, they shortened it. And so his time was shortened. Okay. A few initial thoughts about Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson is going to be likely problematic for the prosecution. Why? You think? Alan Jackson is slick. He is very well spoken. Gee, I mean, see, this is what's really funny is they keep saying this about Alan Jackson. These idiots continue to say these things like Alan Jackson is a game show host. And he's okay. Sure. Definitely. Is, is he, uh, you know, flamboyant in the sense of like Johnny Cochran, right? Not quite, but, you know, does he have those same qualities because it's his job to have those same qualities? Sure. Sure. But the thing is, though, he does. He has yet to even need to apply them. The facts speak for themselves. The evidence that they've presented that they don't even need to present. The facts that they've presented speaks volumes on their own. Anybody could present those facts. Like, because I, I promise you Alan Jackson's, Alan Jackson's, you know, panache, his, his, his personality, his, hey, that, that gleam from his teeth, 
isn't doing shit for Auntie Bev, dude. And he's the only she's the only person that he's got to impress right now. He's not dealing with a jury yet. That isn't doing shit for Beverly Canone. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's not doing anything. As a matter of fact, I don't think that Beverly Canone likes Alan Jackson very much. Considering that she cuts him off. Considering that she's rude. Considering that she's condescending. Considering that she's sarcastic. Considering that she is snarky. I do not think that she cares much for Alan Jackson and or David Yannetti. So it doesn't matter how slick he is. Auntie Bev's not buying it. It's not working on Auntie Bev. Okay. He is uh, passionate about his subject. He understands the law. He is very well. Let, let's also point out the fact that let's let's keep a scorecard. I'll let you guys do that. A scorecard of how many motions Jackson and Yanetti have filed that she's enforced, that she's ruled for and still enforced. Because how many pieces of discovery do they still have not have no access to? When has she enforced any of the motions that 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 she ruled in their favor? She hasn't enforced any of them. She orders the prosecution to follow through with certain things. And then when they don't, she's just like, fuck it. So... Well appointed. In other words, he looks good in terms of his dress and, and how he uh, presents himself. On top of that, and I think this is the biggest thing, and this is why he's getting paid a quarter of a million dollars in this case and, you know, has a high price tag. He is so charismatic. He could almost get up there and sell a telephone book salesman a telephone book. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, you, you you have to buy product wholesale so that you can resell it. Um, <laughs> that's why a telephone book salesman, a telephone book salesman doesn't get his telephone books for free. He has to buy them. Um, <laughs> but yes, I agree with her in the sense that, uh, yeah, uh, you hire a good defense attorney um, and part of the reason why you hire them and pay so much money for them is part of the reason is because they're charismatic. You want that. You want a jury to like them. Sure. That doesn't make him in some way, shape or form nefarious or shady. Just the fact that he's a lawyer makes him that. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, this lady is reaching. I mean, he's not his char his his charisma is not taking him very far with Judge Beverly Canone, not at all, because she has not been displaying any actions that show that she is falling for his charisma in any way, shape, or form. And we're not even at trial yet. So, what she's talking about means dick. This is her trying to control the narrative. This is her trying to control the public's perception of him. And why would she do that? Because she has something to lose. See, this is where we start to think that Jen Jennifer Koffendoffer is shady. Because why does she give a fuck what the public thinks? Because... Already, I mean, she, here she is, and she's trying to convince the public right now, don't be fooled by Alan Jackson. It's his job. It's his job. He's He was hired because he's so charismatic, because he could sell telephone books to a telephone book salesman. But no, that has nothing to do with where we're at right now. That has absolutely nothing to do with where we're at like that right now. If you were just concerned with the facts of the case, you would not be attacking Alan Jackson for being good at his job. 
The only reason, the only motive you would have for that is to control how the public who you are addressing would view Alan Jackson. That would be your only motive. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. We got a super chat. <laughs> William Lafferty, thank you so much. Only thing that worries me about the FBI investigation is that they have people like Cop and Duffy working for them. Well, she doesn't work for them now. Um, you know, but yeah, <laughs> I, I said this a long time ago. This it's a bad look that she keeps claiming the FBI. Like if I work for the FBI, if I'm somebody on the higher ups of the FBI and I see her saying the things that she's saying and I'm familiar with this case, I'm going to be like, quit name dropping us. <laughs> Stop it. We don't want to be connected to you. Thank you again, William Lafferty. I appreciate it. <laughs> this lady is incredible. I'm telling you that her only motive would be to control the public narrative, to control how the public looks at this case. Why does she care? That would be my, my next question. Why does she care what the public thinks as far as Karen Reed's innocence or guilt? Unless she has some sort of skin in the game. Which brings me to my next question. How does she know so much about Chloe? Why does she happen to know things about this case that nobody else seems to know? Or why does she seem to know things about this case that nobody else seems to know? Because I would say, as Melanie Little would say, I would submit to you that that makes her either a fucking liar or she is somehow being contracted by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Through some degree. One of the two. Either she is being paid or she's a fucking liar. And I never was in the FBI. And I don't need to be a trained investigator to come to that very obvious conclusion. Okay, sorry that nobody has telephone books much anymore. But anyway, you get my point. Uh, <laughs> snow to an Eskimo, however you want to say it. She's so He's mad. charismatic. You want to believe him. And he comes off very... Uh, I wonder if she's got her chat on and she's looking at uh, her chat. Stately and uh, in charge. That's the biggest word I can use for him. He is so in charge of that courtroom and of his words. And um, you really want to listen to him. Here's my pop. You want to listen to him because the things that he is saying are compelling. He's not selling the things that he's saying. The things that he's saying are what is getting everyone's attention. When he says things like an FBI investigator from Quantico independently came to the conclusion that John O'Keefe's injuries are not consistent with someone who have been hit by a car. That's something that grabs your attention. When he says that an independent FBI investigator through their own independent investigation came to the conclusion that Jennifer McCabe's phone actually made that search at 2.27 a.m., that's compelling. That's not him dancing and singing, making jokes, that's not him rhyming his words like Johnny Cochran. That's him pre presenting a very compelling argument against the accusations against Karen Reed. Positives on Alan Jackson. The negatives on Alan Jackson is if you really dissect his words and dissect what he has to say, that is where... Really? Because I... I Th those were the positive things you had to say about Alan Jackson? Because it sounded to me like you were just calling him a fucking car salesman. You know what I mean? Like you were basically bringing, just dumbing him down to a used car salesman for your audience. That's what it sounded like to me. 
See, this is these are the manipulation tactics that these idiots have because they think that we're stupid. Where it falters. And I think if he gets a jury of very professional individuals, of individuals that are well educated and individuals like my daddy, who was a farmer, who could see through BS, um, I think he's going to have a problem because he does come off um, very strong. And when you really look at the paper and then compare it to the words, you realize, hmm. So let me get this straight. You think that Karen Reed is going to be found guilty because the jury's not going to like Alan Jackson being so flamboyant. That's, that's, that's your professional input on all this. That's your insight. As a, as a as somebody who has has been a part of so many grand juries, someone who has been who has testified in so many trials, right? You, you think that Karen Reed is going to get convicted based on the idea that a jury just isn't going to like Alan Jackson being able to take charge of a courtroom? <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, it, they don't add up. So let me go through. So again, that's the pros and cons, at least that's, that's, you know, what I'm seeing. So uh, let's go through just a couple of his points. Uh, so why is he saying the grand jury, what was withheld from the grand jury? Well, he's saying specifically that Sergeant Lank and Chris Albert, Chris Albert is Brian Albert's brother. And he's right. saying they're really good friends. Well, and Chris Albert also sits on the select board in Canton, which you're failing to address, which you are conveniently leaving out. Lank was with the uh, Canton Police Department. Now, I think that is just a silly argument because, and, and Yanetti should have just, to me, not even, or I'm sorry, uh, Jackson shouldn't have gone there because. It kind of when you make an argument that doesn't have a lot of strength or a lot of teeth, in my opinion, and just from. Hmm, that's interesting. So she says that. Alan Jackson should have just left that detail alone. Alan Jackson. I mean, it was it was not a smart move for, for from Alan Jackson to address the fact that the grand jury was lied to from the very beginning of this case. Because that detail is, ah, that's a bad move. Don't talk about that. What do you mean? Why wouldn't he bring that up? Why wouldn't he bring up the fact that there is absolutely a conflict of interest from the very beginning in this case? Somehow or another, that's a bad strategic move by Alan Jackson to state the obvious that this, that the, the base of this investigation, the foundation of this investigation was built on lies. The integrity was compromised from the base. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a bad move. Right. From. Um experience sitting by the prosecutor at the table deciding what we are what we are not going to present the questions so forth um and you let's also state the obvious again folks <laughs> knowing what we know as of about 20 minutes ago was it a bad move for alan jackson to bring that up knowing that now detective proctor is being investigated by internal affairs of the Massachusetts State Police. That that's. Yeah. So tell me again that that was a bad move on Alan Jackson's part. Okay. <laughs> you want to present the meat. You want to present something that holds uh, water. Um, and this was a weak argument. That's my opinion. Um, the second argument was about Proctor. Okay, so for people who don't know, 
Um, Trooper Proctor is the main investigator for the state police on the case. And go. Trooper Proctor's sister is friends with Brian Albert's brother's wife. I know that's a lot. You know, I always say, just think about this in, in your life, you who are viewing, and I've thought about it in mine. So this would mean, as an example, uh, my sister, I'll take my sister, Chris. My sister, Chris, is good friend. Now, again, this is smoke and mirrors. Now, I'm not a religious guy, okay? I'm not a religious guy. But what they tell you in basically every Christian faith, every denomination of the Christian Christian faith, is that the devil is the master of manipulation and deceit, distraction. That is exactly what she's doing here. She's presenting distraction. She's trying to create deceit. Because putting it simply is Proctor had a relationship, Proctor's family has a has a personal relationship with the family that owns that home. That is a conflict of interest, period. I don't care how you paint the picture. I don't care who you say, well, this sister and that sister, because that's just designed to confuse people and go, oh, well, that's just nothing. Because that is designed to distract you from the fact that they sat at a wedding together. They were part of the wedding that Michael Proctor's mother claimed that the McCabe's are a second family to the Proctors. This is all a very tight knit group. This isn't just, I know somebody loosely through this person who knows somebody loosely through that person. That's not what this is. This is family, man. This is fucking family. All of these people are tight. And all of these people have motive to cover up for each other. All of these people have motive to cover up for one another. All of them do. So you could sit there and try to confuse everybody by saying, oh, well, this person knows this person, this person knows that. No, man. These people all kick it together, dude. They were all hanging out in the house together. After drinks. Give me a fucking break. Friends with um, the brother of somebody whose house I was at, sister. I mean, in other words... I love my sister, Chris, but I don't know all her friends or I, I, in fact, I can say, even though we're very close, I really don't know her friends except for once in a while, I'll see them at barbecues and things like that. Um, so it's funny because I can <laughs> say that and Ooh, what if somebody pulled up a picture of me and one of her friends at a barbecue? And then they'd say, see, Jennifer's really close with her friend. That's what's going on here. That's why no. the prosecution <laughs> not what's going keeps on here. arguing. I, I, I'm uh, not you going know, Jackson to. Jackson said, I don't understand. What I, I'm not going to explain everything I just explained twice. <laughs> but that's not what's going on here. Right now, today in their papers, they're still, still saying there isn't this close relationship. It's because there isn't. But does that mean uh, that through other through his wife, and his wife's friends that they aren't connected? No, it just means that Detective Proctor isn't connected. But they tried to bring up uh, a, a situation. Detective Proctor is connected. Uh, babysitting. Detective Proctor is connected. He's absolutely connected to the McCabe's as well as the Alberts. He's totally connected. Scott McGinnis, thank you so much, buddy. Coffin was career firearms instructor for the FBI. Thank God no one was accidentally unalive. They gave her pew pews. What the hell? Um, <laughs> you don't have to censor yourself here, man. It's okay. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Sitting situation, which never ended up happening, but I guess was discussed, uh, where an Albert would babysit uh, one of the Proctor's children never happened but it was offered uh and uh, how do you know it never happened uh, how do you know it never happened 
See, it's little things like that. How do you know it never happened? How would you have that, that kind of intimate knowledge of the ins and outs of the interactions between uh, the Proctors, the McCabe's, the Alberts, or the McAlberts? What... How do you know? Uh, where uh, Julie Albert made a comment uh, to, again, to the wife's sister. Yeah, Lolly said it, but it doesn't mean it fucking happened. Sister, uh, that essentially, uh, you know, afterwards, I want to give a gift or something to Detective Pro Proctor after the case. Now, how Jackson spun it, which it, it's his job to spin. It's his job to cause reasonable doubt. It's his job to divert from the meat of facts and try to divert off into these other areas. Because really, what does this has to have to do with the price of tea in China? What does this have to do? <laughs> it's because it's inappropriate. Because it indicates that Proctor is willing to bend the rules. That's why. He didn't spin anything. Proctor straight up said he didn't correct the person. He didn't make it out to be more than it was. He said, okay, well, they offered a gift and he said, give it to my wife. He did not state that it was inappropriate and he did not state that it was against policy. That's where he went wrong. That is enough in court. That is enough to say, okay, these people, that, that, like, that is enough to create doubt. That is enough to create doubt in any aspect of the investigation that he was in charge of. So it's not that he spun anything. He just straight up said he never corrected her. He never said, hey, that's inappropriate. Don't, we can't do that. He said, give it to my wife. With evidence that shows that nine or 10 people viciously attacked um, John O'Keefe. You know, I want to see things like DNA. I want to see things like uh, bruises all over them. You know, this huge fight that would have taken place. They were in, you know, law enforcement officers were in the house uh, after that. I want to see the house destroyed. I want to see the drag marks, blood all over the lawn. This is evidence that somebody inside or, or even one of the witnesses. And remember, there's an ATF agent in that house at this time. And there is a Boston police officer in this house at this time. Notice they haven't lost their jobs. Um, you know, if there were evidence that they had viciously killed John O'Keefe, I think you would see evidence like that. But rather than that, they're pointing out discussions of babysitting um, from people that are removed from okay. the actual detective okay. on the case. And um, John O'Keefe. You know, I want to see things like DNA. I want to see things like uh, bruises all over them. You know, this huge fight that would have taken place. They were in, um, you know. A lot there were bruises. There were bruises that an FBI expert independently said that were not consistent with him being hit by a car. So, but go on. Law enforcement officers were in the house uh, after that. I want to see the house right. destroyed. What, when was the search done of the home? And who went inside the house? Lank, right? Didn't Lank go inside the house? Who went inside the house? Isn't there already a conflict of interest of Lank? I mean, <laughs> this... You're, you're, you're sitting here acting like the FBI findings didn't happen. If I say the shit loud enough and repeat it enough, then it must make it true. Right? Sorry, we're not, <laughs> we're not buying it. We're not buying it.
side. I want to see the drag marks, blood all over the lawn. This is evidence that somebody inside or, or even one of the witnesses. And remember, there's an ATF agent in that house at this time. And the who the prosecution is now <laughs> so geniusly basically putting more motive in that house by naming him and stating that he has an affair with Karen Reed. <laughs> Gavel geek, so I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. <laughs> Gavel geeks, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Scream me on my phone. This woman is straight up lying. Yes, she is. And she has been lying ever since she first started talking about this case. 100% which is why we're reviewing her. <laughs> there is a Boston police officer in this house at this time. Notice they haven't lost their jobs. Um, you know, if there were evidence yet. that they had viciously <laughs> killed you. They haven't yet because there was no reason to. They haven't lost their job. Notice they haven't lost their jobs. Funny how you should say that. Really, literally 24 hours before... Proctor is announced that he's being investigated by internal affairs in the Massachusetts State Police Department. Huh. Fascinating. Yeah, they still have their jobs. For now. For now. Well, John O'Keefe, I think you would see evidence like that. But rather than that, they're pointing they out discussions of babysitting. Um, from people that are removed from the actual detective on the case. And then also this, hey, you know, I I've got a gift for him or something like this when this is all over. How I took that was uh, the fact of John O'Keefe uh, dying and this trooper being in charge of the investigation and hopefully, I suppose, doing a good job on it. Was it should she have said this, <laughs> this woman, Julie Albert, again, the wife of the brother of the guy who lived at the house uh, uh, to uh, Proctor's um, to Proctor's sister? You're the second now, person to, uh, that I've heard say that. <laughs> probably not. But that does not prove that nine people murdered somebody inside the house. Again. What about the voice of Getty Lee? How did it get so high? Hold on. What did she say here? Proctor's, um, to Proctor's sister. You know, I, probably not. But that does not prove that nine people murdered somebody inside the house. Well, nobody's saying that nine people murdered John O'Keefe inside that house. What they're saying is we don't know what happened inside that house, but everyone that was inside that house is fucking lying. <laughs> that's what we're saying nobody's nobody's saying nine people fucking ganged up on this dude and killed him nobody's saying that so when you if you're going to quote those of us with common sense please do so accurately because nobody's saying that nine people killed john o'keefe we're saying one person most likely killed him and that everyone else is covering it up And those people should be implicated for covering it up. Right. Two people tops and a dog. <laughs> that's that's the summary. Again, I think this argument is going to fall on completely deaf ears um, in no. terms of the weight of what Odell asks for and requires. And showing and and now showing the the sus well not suspension but the investigation into proctor i wonder how much influence that's going to have on judge bev's decision to dismiss i'm wondering i wonder how much impact how much weight that's going to hold 
because it should hold some. It should absolutely hold some weight. Going these two loose relationships, in my opinion, is not loose going to rise to that level of dismissing an indictment. Loose relationships, because of course, you know, we ask people with loose relationships with us to babysit our kids, right? That's what we do. We just get people who we just kind of know through other people to watch our kids. Okay. It would mean overlooking all the other vast evidence that exists. Um, and finally, and this is the one I really, really wanted to touch on. And this is the one that, of course, Jackson wanted to hammer home. And Jackson wanted to hammer home the fact uh, that the RCFL, which is the investigative branch of the FBI that handles forensic analysis of cellular phones and, and other data, he wanted to drive home the fact that, listen, the FBI's RCFL has said that text message that Jen McCabe, or sorry, not the text message, that Google search that Jen McCabe did was at 2.27 in the morning, right? That, that, that's the crux. That's one thing they want yeah. to try to get out because why would she Google how, you know, how long does it take for somebody to die in the cold right? if she wasn't aware or if he wasn't out there dying in the cold, right? That's the inference. So that's what Jackson said unequivocally. And what's Get odd to, to me is that it lady. seems like the people that were the, that are either really believe that Karen Reed is innocent and did not hit John O'Keefe. Also, I think some of the people that might have been on the fence, possibly, um, it seemed to me that they sort of latched onto that and didn't listen to the state's response. Now, I listened to this about four times, are you talking and about? I took all these notes because I wanted to make sure notes, guys. I wasn't missing it. What? And in the response, <laughs> the prosecution clearly states, listen, what the RCFL and- I'm retarded. Analyze was two uh, particular point, two particular data points, if you will, extractions. Extractions is the precise no word offense, that is used. You are a stupid ass. Which would have been precise or provided by the defense, provided by the defense, not by the prosecution. The prosecution is quick to also point out. Listen, we haven't given anything to the FBI. Nothing to the FBI. What the FBI has was provided to them by the defense only. And, and that made sense to me because we also found out today that it was the defense that went to the prior sitting U.S. attorney <laughs> with this case, with the case. It's the defense saying, listen. Right, because the U.S. attorney is is going to get this stuff presented to them and go you know what since you're the defense attorney trying to defend somebody who's on, on trial then sure yes we'll help you and we'll do everything to help you and your client that's not how it works basically they say this is what's happening and this is why we think this is happening and then the u.s attorney goes well then this merits an investigation and so they start to investigate. The U.S. attorney isn't dogs that the defense gets to sick on people, gets to sick on a, 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 a district attorney's office. That's not how it works. The fuck are you talking about, lady? That, yeah, the, oh, well, you know, yeah, the, 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 the defense went to the D U.S. attorney's. Yeah, we know. We know. But there's no fucking way that they're going to actually investigate and go this far because, you know, they hang out with the defense and their buddies. It's not how it works.
They need to have reason. They need to have probable cause. There is public corruption and look at all we have and investigate. And remember at that time that U.S. attorney had some serious issues with this uh, district attorney. And I'm not saying that that necessarily pushed them into this decision, but take note that U.S. attorney is gone because of a multitude of uh, allegations. Shut up. Hold on a second, guys. So, hold on a second. <laughs> we interrupt this uh, program for a quick update. So here's Grant's post uh, about <laughs> here's Grant's post about uh, about uh, Ted Daniels report. You know the the mainstream media outlet <laughs> that's not going to post something unless it's verified. Um, <laughs> so Grant says. <laughs> Grant, Grant is uh, targeting Ted Daniel here, and he says, this is irresponsible and reckless reporting that borders on doing PR for Karen Reed, Ted. Are you blindly repeating what Reed's team tells you in, in an effort to poison the jury pool for clicks? Did the Reed defense refer this routine 1A probe as the punishment? Are you hiding it? <laughs> Dude. That is what you call desperation. That is what you call panic. And I don't know what he's panicking about. Like, Grant, nobody gives a fuck about you anyway, bro. Like, nobody gives a fuck what you have to say. Like, you're not losing out. Once, once all of this comes out that you were talking out of your ass the whole time, then everyone's going to know that... Everyone is going to, it's just, everybody, it's just going to confirm what we already knew, which was that shit comes out of your mouth and blood comes out of your ass. We already knew this. Nothing that you say is ever taken seriously by anybody with a fucking brain. Okay. So you don't have to try to save face here. Uh, and especially in this manner and this, <laughs> this, this effort. Is absolutely ridiculous. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. This Scott McGinnis, thank you. Jenny here needs to face facts other than Trooper Guarno's bogus phone phone exam. Three other experts, including FBI, have confirmed the 2:27 a.m. search. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Scott McGinnis. I mean, this is just, this is so much fun. Now you guys know why I do these streams. We're not even done yet, folks. We're not even done yet. I still got to get into Plevin. You know what I'm saying? Like, how am I not supposed to just, like, this is part of what I'm going to bring to the table here is just to watch all of the idiots who have been talking without any common sense, watch them crumble, trying to save face, trying to double down. All that shit is very, very entertaining to me. All of that shit is very, very fun to me. Here, I'll speed her up just to get through. She fired herself. Bro, and did so you see her? Did and you see uh, her but that investigation pause? continued. Yeah, and great. I understand why the investigation continued. Investigation should have been wanted by both sides. Look, the defense wants it because they want to see if there's any public corruption there. They believe there might have been some. Grant also said the gift to Proctor was a hug. Thank you, Street Squirrel member for four months. Grant also said the gift to Proctor was a hug. That's very funny. Um, because what's funny is, is if it were the other way around, Grant would be like, oh my God, she offered sexual favors. 
He offered sexual favors, which is ridiculous, but that's what Grant would be saying. A hug? We know what a hug means, don't we? We absolutely know what a hug means. <laughs> Grant, just stop, man. Go back to sleep, buddy. Go back to sleep. We'll wake you up when it's all over, okay? Some public corruption because uh, the case wasn't handled perfectly. No case, I've always said, ever is. Uh, and sometimes corruption can mirror mistakes. So incompetent action what? can look like corruption, but it doesn't mean it is corruption. Uh no. no, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. <laughs> all of the, the mishandling of this investigation, all of the mistakes, sorry, they add up to corruption. When... Literally all of the evidence that they've collected is based on bullshit. Because I mean, you got to pick a you you got to pick a lane here. Either you're going towards the fact that the the case was mishandled and they don't have enough evidence, or that uh, Alan Jackson is just going to make a bunch of shit up and convince the jury with pizzazz. You know, no, dude, like you, you got to pick a lane here. The fact is, is that the grand jury was lied to. The fact is, is that the FBI has stepped in and now you're being made aware of some of their findings. And now you're sitting here trying to save face because everything that you've been saying this entire time in regards to this case is blowing up in your fucking face. And you are looking stupid to everyone now. Not just the people who have been following the case and paying close attention to it. Not just all, those of us. You're looking stupid to everyone now. You're looking stupid to court TV now. You have lost credibility. There's no coming back from that. The internet is forever. All of your tweets that people took screenshots of. Every time someone talked about you and your the stupid tweets that you have put out there in regards to this case, which are absolutely contradictory to any of the actual facts that have now been made public. They're all out there. They're all out there. I told you to go back to sleep before. I told you. I was like, Jennifer Kaufman, just stop. Just stop. Because you're making a fool of yourself. And yet, you didn't listen. And now here you are doing, like, I mean, this is just, th this is comedic. This is beyond comedic. Your, your, your entire credibility is absolutely fucked. Uh, so, it, you know, they were the ones that pushed for it. I can tell you what, in any investigation, I, I can't imagine uh, the boat or the shoes that the DA must be in because I've never been in those shoes from that end of it. Um, but here the DA is investigating this case. To me, they should have also wanted this public or federal probe. Why? Because I think the DA believes and the officers at Ball that they haven't done anything wrong. Did they collect some snow in solo cups? Did they miswrite some names? Okay, so now what she's doing is trying to save face. Because she tried to deny that there was ever a federal investigation in the first place. She whined and bitched about the fact that they never even approached. They never even approached DA Morrissey or anyone from his office stating that they were investigating them. Because that's standard too, right? Is that we, we, we let everybody know. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure that, that, that when Brian Koberger, was when it was being led up to his arrest that, that the investigators in charge of that were approaching Brian Koberger and going, hey, just want to let you know you're currently under investigation for a quadruple homicide. We just wanted to let you know, give you a heads up that we're investigating you. No, no, bro. It's not how it works. You were all butthurt about it. Why didn't they say anything? They would have cooperated. Well, no. I mean, they had reason to believe that they wouldn't cooperate. 
you tried to even deny the validity of 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 the letters that were taking place. That doesn't mean that they're under investigation. Of course, it means that we're under investigation. We now know for a fact that they were under investigation. Why? Because we're fine. We're hearing findings of their investigation. Some names. Um, yes. Yes. You know, no, no uh, investigation is perfect. People make mistakes. But are the mistakes something that compromise the evidence, the strong evidence in this case, which is completely separate from whether some blood of John O'Keefe's was collected in a solo cup, which is. I, 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 I got to hear where you're going with this. I love it. What, what happened? Uh, one of the big things people want to point out. Um, but back to my original point, and that's. Hmm. Yeah. The red solo cups. Is that all you're going to touch on? We're not going to talk about the clothes that were on the floor in the hospital where these convenient microscopic fragments of tail light were found. After five undocumented searches took place where the other pieces of taillight were found. We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the fact that the, the, uh, we're not going to talk about the fact that the metadata and the device used to take the crime scene photographs are no longer in existence. They no longer exist, quote unquote. We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the leaf blower. We did talk about the conflict of interest. You failed in explaining that, but the conflict of interest is real. It's there. I mean, lady, <laughs> just stop. That's regarding these Google searches. Um, two extractions were given by the defense to the RCFL, okay? The RCFL, according to Jackson, what he stated is that the RCFL, a Quantico trained, Quantico trained FBI agent uh, said that indeed the Google search that Jen McCabe did took place at 2.27 in the morning. This is the problem with the statement. The statement is misleading because it does not say what Celebrite and Axiom programs were used. It doesn't say when it was done. So my point is, is did they have the proper tools to find the all the information that they would need to show exactly when that search was done? And that happens in trial, genius. They're not going to do that. <laughs> all they need to do is offer the conclusion and the credibility of the source of that conclusion, which is an independent federal investigator, a federal expert. Who came to this conclusion? I mean, as far as those details of how they came to that conclusion, that would happen on the stand when the defense calls that expert up. Or when the 3,100 pages are made public and we could see that. That'll probably happen. And can you imagine the shit storm when that happens? Can you imagine what that's going to look like? Once, <laughs> yeah, three PhDs. Once the, the <laughs> once the, 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 all of this, all of the findings of the federal investigation are made public, can you imagine what Olivia and Sleuthy are going to do with that shit on Twitter? And secondarily, and most importantly, according to the prosecution, what they said in that hearing after Jackson spoke, the prosecutor said, and listen, you're ignoring the last report from the RCFL. So, yes, there was one report, probably because it wasn't based on a totality of all the information that was available. But there was a second report. And in that second report, the RCFL found that, in fact, the Google searches occurred. And I'm going to give you the exact time, 623 and 624. Okay, so six three twenty three and six twenty four, which was which was concluded by an expert hired by the Commonwealth, not an independent third party. The independent third party 
the federal third party with three PhDs concluded that Jen McCabe absolutely made that search at 2.27 a.m. Just minutes after fucking um, Higgins, after Higgins and Brian Albert had that phone call. Which also comports with the totality of the case, the totality of the evidence. In other words, with witness statements from Carrie Roberts, who was there, also from witness statements of Jen McCabe, who was there, also from the statements of the medical individuals who were there, and from Karen Reed herself in her spontaneous utterance, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That is coming into evidence, whether people want that or not. So, okay. Now, well, I can't talk about that yet. That is something I definitely wanted to clear up. And I also wanted to specifically say that I don't believe the defense team showed that there was what you call a distortion of evidence that was presented to the grand jury, thus meeting. Thank you. Want to smoke? Uh, Want to smoke one? Give it to my wife, Proctor shouted enthusiastically from the chair in the corner. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, nobody's disputing the, 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 the other searches. like The Odell standard to throw out this indictment. I don't think the judge will throw out the indictment. And furthermore, I don't think the judge is going to kick off the DA. The second part of the hearing. Yeah, we don't think that either. Argued. We don't think that either, but not for the reasons that you don't think so. Why the DA should be removed. Essentially, it all revolves around a uh, statement that many of you might have seen. I'm going to post it again on my Twitter where... Um, Unfortunately, the people that were in that house, including ATF agent Brian Higgins, including um, Boston police officer uh, Brian Albert, uh, wives, uh, children, uh, the dog Chloe, for heaven's sakes. Thank you, uh, Marcia. They were all. Yeah, yeah, we already went over it. Thank you. We're just waiting for more developments. Being Appreciate harassed it. and accused of murder. Uh, at one point, the prosecution said that a, a horde of hundred people plus were screaming on the lawns of these witnesses, murder, murder. I personally saw a video at a lacrosse game uh, where people who support Karen Reed <laughs> were calling her, you know, a, a police murderer, an officer murderer, words to that effect. You murdered him. And, and you know, we've all seen the social media clips. Uh, the bottom line is uh, it was getting to be unbearable uh, in terms of being able to live a life. Uh, Chris Albert, again, the brother, they, the people who were supporting Karen Reed were doing things like he has a pizza place, uh, Italian place, making orders and then not picking them up. So he was losing all this money because he's making food and nobody's coming to pick it up. So it's just going to waste. So unfortunately, um, the situation of harassment and witness intimidation rose to such a level uh, that individuals were not only charged and we'll see where that goes. But in addition to that, uh, the DA, I think, concerned about the elevation of shit. physical threats. Of An Italian place. <laughs> an italian place and people people showed up to the lacrosse game hordes of people showed up in front of people's houses and were screaming bro like first of all every single first of all turtle boy was responsible for all of those things um but the thing is is like none of it was illegal none of it was technically illegal well Technically, it was illegal, but it was based on a bullshit law. I mean, and the thing is, is like people didn't show up to a lacrosse game and start yelling murderer. That's not what happened. Turtle Boy showed up there. Stuck his phone in Jennifer McCabe's face. Matt McCabe tried to act tough. He left. That's it. That's it. Like sitting here and being like, oh my God, like these poor people. Like, no, what's happening right now, <laughs> what's happening in real time as we speak right now is that everything that Turtle Boy did is proving to have been necessary to get to the truth. That's a, a fact that is absolutely undeniable at this point. Everything Turtle Boy did as outlandish and crazy and wild as it seemed at the time that got him so much hate has now been proven or is now proving 
present tense to be absolutely necessary to get to the to get to the truth. There's no denying it. Physical actions that were occurring uh, that it was getting out of hand. And so he came out publicly and said, listen, this has got to stop. Uh, he said he had never done it in his uh, decades of service, uh, in his decades of being an attorney, uh, but he had to do what he felt uh, because of the intimidation these witnesses were suffering. So this is the reason that now the defense wants him sanctioned and want. Yeah, but you're also leaving out the part where he lied in this public statement. Not only was it totally unethical in the way that he presented this, because yes, he did say this has to stop. This needs to stop. Of course. Yes. We all heard him say that, but we also heard him lie several times, including the lie that the Pro proctors and the McCabe's had no relationship. And that this proves that Proctor had no motive to plant the taillight evidence. Which we now know he did have motive because the Proctors and the McCabe's have a relationship. Wants the him essentially off the case. Uh, so I also think the judge will not, um, will not side on that view either. And I think it's very simple why. Uh, this was a very unique set of circumstances and, and it was in the interest of, of public safety, of safety for these witnesses uh, that hopefully an end or cease uh, fire, if you will, uh, would occur with him trying to tell the public, leave them alone, which was essentially the message. So that pretty much, oh no, no. There was one other thing that was really important. Sorry, this came oh, at the very oh. end. And this is where, uh, the defense said, listen, we also want to point out that we just found out from the FBI's investigation that there was a uh, accident reconstruction, a reconstructionist that was hired by the Bureau, which I found interesting because the lab does do this kind of work. So maybe the amount, maybe the people who were, weren't available, but uh, essentially, uh, according to Jackson, had multiple PhDs and, and came forth and, and did his accident reconstruction. So this is the problem with this. And this is where um, oh, I got to hear this, this. This was the last kind of last straw for me where I said, oh, my gosh, I need to come on. When was that done? We know that it's only been recently that a lot of these lab results are back. And the crucial lab results that anyone that does accident reconstruction would want to know is our taillight fragments, tiny microscopic fragments from her taillight embedded in the fabric of the shirt he wore. And the answer to that is yes. Also, is he is, is his DNA on the tail light fragments that were at the scene and the answer is yes we don't know about the yeah and it was never specified blood dna so we have to assume that it wasn't blood dna first of all second of all his dna being on the tail light it was his girlfriend's car that means that fucking who knows how his dna got on the fucking tail light who gives a shit it doesn't prove anything. John put fucking groceries in the trunk at one point. And who knows? I mean, who the fuck knows? Of course his DNA is going to be on that car. Of course. Dude, even if he washed the car. Like he could have washed the car and then when he was drying the car off, his DNA got on the taillight. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that all I have to do is say that to a jury if I'm a defense attorney and I'm shooting that evidence down. I guess the FBI didn't give her an update. <laughs> Thank you, Buzzy, for truth. <laughs> exactly. Um, so... <laughs> And again, the clothing, the fabric embedded into the fabric of John O'Keefe's clothing that was found on the floor, that, 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 that pictures were taken that were on the floor in the hospital, that the, 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 the nature of how the rest of the, the taillight fragments and pieces were collected 
are undocumented by the police officer who's now under investigation by internal affairs? You mean that? That's the evidence that I'm not supposed to dismiss as unreliable if I'm a juror? Yeah, anything with Proctor's name slapped on it is bullshit now. It's all bullshit now. Anything with Proctor's name slapped on it is absolute and utter bullshit. It was before he was even being investigated. Three hours ago, anything with Trooper Proctor's name on it was unreliable already. Already. So <laughs> now it's just more unreliable. <laughs> this lady's out of her mind about the hair yet we're waiting to hear there's been mixed reports even today i saw nbc come out again and say the hair was john o'keefe's suzanne thank you for the venmo i just saw the uh the notification thank you so much i i don't know where they're getting that from but i read that again maybe they have a better source uh to the information and somehow know that but my understanding is that's still being analyzed nbc says it's gone back to him um either way these other two pieces of information an accident reconstructionist will want to know because they're looking at the totality of everything. And I believe this accident reconstruction was done months ago, months ago. And at the end of every expert report, the expert always writes, this is my opinion now, but if more evidence or information is made available to me, I may change my view or my opinion based on that supplemental evidence. And it happens all the time. I We got a super chat. <laughs> Scott McGinnis, thank you. Isn't it so funny how only now the Massachusetts Attorney General and Andrea Campbell takes over the Sandra Birchmore case from Meatball DA Morrissey, and now Massachusetts State Police Colonel Mon investigates Proctor and crew. Feds coming hard. I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it as always, man. I could tell you in uh, another Break the Case podcast, if you watch podcast number one, there was a huge moment in the Sam Shepard trial where uh, there was a blood uh, expert, blood spatter expert and blood expert that got on the stand and made this huge case um, about blood spatter pointing away from the uh, individual being Sam Shepard as the person that killed Marilyn Shepard. Well, guess what? <laughs> in cross-examination and only about one or two questions had to be asked and it was about blood type. Well, this expert had failed to even test the blood type of Sam Shepard. So he could never make the analysis to point at who was the contributor. So it was it was just a mess. He lost complete credibility at that point because he, for, he did all of the difficult tests of alleles and all of this, but he never typed it and the type was wrong. So anyway, my point is- Yeah, shut up. Uh, Tara, just got your Venmo. Thank you. Appreciate that is that experts work with what they have. So consider this, that expert that was contracted by the FBI, mm -hmm. that expert only had what was given to them by the defense because the prosecution, as you heard in court today, never gave any of their evidence. So that's what he had to work with. That's why I was- So, <laughs> so your argument speaks to the validity of, of this expert. And- you're saying that the reason why his findings aren't valid is because the prosecution failed to share evidence with the defense when they were supposed to share evidence with the defense. Did you really just fucking say that shit out loud? I maybe I'm wrong because I again, dude, I gotta I gotta hear that one more time because I, I can't believe my fucking ears. <laughs> Leals and all of this, but he never typed it and the type was wrong. So anyway, my point is, is that experts work with what they have. So consider this, that expert that was contracted by the FBI, that expert only had what was given to them by the defense because the prosecution, as you heard in court today, never gave any of their evidence. So that's what he had to work with. That's why I was saying when I was tweeting, listen. So you think that a jury is going to convict Karen Reed Based on the fact that the prosecution failed to share discovery with the defense, which is Karen Reed's right. 
That's your that's your expert fucking analysis. Are you fucking serious right now that you just said that shit out loud? Your expert analysis is that the defense has no defense because the prosecution didn't share the evidence that they had with the defense, even though they were legally obligated to do so. Okay. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, dude! I I I've got serious inquiries about the FBI's vetting process. Serious inquiries. Seriously, this is fucking worrisome. That this person was put in a position to have handcuffs and a gun, and decide whether or not somebody belongs in jail or not. Unbelievable. Let's see what they stay, say on the stand. I want to see their final report if they supplement it. I want to see what they raise their hand and swear to. And I think I love it. She's already picturing the shit happening on the stand. Let me reenact that for you, okay? Because what's going to end up happening is the defense is going to say, well, the prosecution is going to say they're going to cross-examine that expert because the defense is going to call him to the stand. And the, and the prosecution is going to call, going to cross-examine that expert and say, well, how could you have possibly known? How could you have come to this conclusion if the defense didn't have the information and the evidence that we were required to provide them in discovery and they never got it. So how could you have come to this conclusion? That's what the prosecution's going to do on the stand. Really? They're going to admit they're going to admit to misconduct with an expert witness on the stand. They're going to, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot to shoot down <laughs> The witness, because again, I mean, redirect, the defense is going to go, well, so yeah, you, you didn't, uh, yes, Mark Callahan. Yes. We went over that. Thank you so much. Boston 25 is an article proctor under internal investigation. Defense requests is info. Right. Um, we read that. Thank you so much. Finally, two minutes left of coup and <laughs> Yeah. We're going to move on from her in just a minute. I'm almost done with her. Uh, thank you, Sully. Appreciate it. Um, so, and then what? The, 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 <laughs> they're going to redirect and then be like, so you didn't have this evidence? Funny. We never got it either. <laughs> I mean, and that's going to look good to the jury for the prosecution? Somehow, according to your logic? That's going to somehow look good for the prosecution. That they didn't share in discovery evidence that they were required by law to share with the defense at the beginning of all of this. Right? Okay. Okay. I think those pieces of evidence that have recently been analyzed are going to change any accident investigator's viewpoint and other information might as well that they might not have had that the defense <laughs> might not have given them. Thank you so much, Charlene Savioli. Pure gold would be a stream with all these 50 shades of batshit crazy. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you so much. That's it. I know I said I'd be short. I think I was a little bit long, but I wanted to get to the meat of all this matter. And I really appreciate you anybody who any caught it. this and who came on. Um, if you like what you see, uh, please subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate all of you. And for all of you true crimers that are on Twitter X, uh, I really, really appreciate you, the true crime community. And thank you. Until next time, may justice be served. <laughs> Shut up! Dude, get the fuck out of here. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Stick your nose out. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> 
Hold on a second. We still got we got a lot to go through, guys. I'm still I'm on my second pot of coffee. You guys are hanging in there with me. I love it. I love it. All right. Oh, this is fucking great. Okay. So I'm just going to fast forward. I just fast forwarded to when Plevin got to the end of the hearing. <laughs> but yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Plevin. Plevin. Now be nice. Be nice, guys. No, 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 no. Come on. You guys are terrible. Oh, you suck. Okay, Plevin. Alan Jackson, and I'm sorry, and there were legitimate things here that people can discuss, but there were times that Alan Jackson just outright lies or deceives. And talking about the 227 was one of those times. Now, I'm going to let this play, but I, I might have to rewind it, but uh, it's because I've been live for four hours and uh, Clever really has to go out, so I have to take him outside real quick. So I'm going to let this play, but I'm going to still be listening. And then... Uh, We'll go over some of this stuff. So he says that the state had the information of the 227 search and didn't present it to the grand jury. And that there's because they had their software wasn't updated. That's bullshit. All right. The state used the latest version of the software available to it at the time before the grand jury. And then many months later, you know, these, everybody owns a phone and owns software. These software things are always updating. So Celebrate, the company that was creating this software, that creates this software, that does this data analysis, had an updated version months later. And that's what the defense's expert, Rich Green, used. But that's to say that the state had some information that they withheld from the grand jury. That's beyond deceptive. That's just a lie. That's just as much of a lie as when you're talking about the non-human hair. And this is what bothers me. So if you're, there were, there were serious objections and points raised by the defense, and they're worth discussing, and they're worth looking into, and they could impact things. But it's so hard because he continues to use these deceptive tactics. And that's not the case at all, that uh, that the state had something that they withheld. That's not the case at all. Now, it'll be interesting to see. So we're going to have these multiple experts come together. Now there's Rich Green on, and I guess some FBI expert on one side. And on the other side is Trooper Garino from the Mass State Police. Then the very esteemed Jessica Hyde, who's a professor at George Mason University. She's in her 60s and has, does a lot of work for the military and different stuff. And we can question anybody that seems to have an ax to grind. So does the state know how to find people that will support its case? Maybe do the feds who had an axe to grind here clearly, do they know how to find someone at the FBI to support their case? I mean, I've seen nothing but shady stuff from the FBI in the last 10 years and beyond. So I, I don't, I don't know. So this is why you have to have these experts go up on the stand. And hey, what did I tell if you? The, if it does nothing but confuse what the grand jury. Did I tell you? See, he's already, he's already warming you up for it. Okay. That the FBI is corrupt. That the only explanation for any of this is all I've seen is 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 weird, questionable behavior from the FBI in the last 10 years. So now, of course, this is going to be his fallback plan. Once all of the dominoes start falling, once all of the pins start falling, whatever metaphor you want to use, the feds are dirty is what he's going to be at. This is what he's going to be. This is going to be what he's going to spin. That the feds are dirty. Before it was, oh, well, they're no they're not even under investigation. That's not even possible. If they if the feds had anything, the defense would be pre presenting it. And yet he's saying still, he's still saying that out of one side of his mouth that if the defense had anything, well they, they would have presented it. Even though they did, even though he accused them of not having anything the last time when he didn't even understand the nature of the hearing in the first place because the judge was not giving the defense the opportunity to present the findings of the FBI investigation, of the of the federal investigation. She, she did not give them the opportunity to speak on that yet. They were scheduling a hearing to which they could do that, and that hearing was yesterday. And that's why they presented their case. That's why they presented the reasons why they filed the motions to dismiss and the and the motion to disqualify. That is exact. That is exactly why they went over the things that they went over. So Plevin, you got to catch up with us, okay? 
But now, even though he's saying that on one side of his mouth and that's already been corrected and he's already been proven wrong on that now, it's, you know, well, the feds, they're not credible. All I've seen is just dirty shit coming from the feds in the last 10 years. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what you got? Jury? The, I'm sorry, the jury, not the grand jury. If it does nothing but confuse the jury on the trial in April, then... It's a wash. It's not so you know we can talk. We can say that now. Interestingly, we learned a little bit more about Whiffin, the ex, the senior analyst from Celebrite. According to Lally, he actually writes this software. I doubt one guy writes it, but he's in charge of the program of putting this together. And he does. And I and no matter what Alan Jackson says, I read the blog report that he put out, and we know that he's testifying for the prosecution. There's no question that he is saying that the timestamp was unreliable and and seems to there seems to be no 227 search here. And he goes into he says it in his opening paragraph in that blog entry and in his closing paragraph. And I know Olivia and other people have tried to give you deceptive. I, I go, I can go, if you email me, I can dig up that link and show it to you. It's very simple to read. So clearly both Jessica Hyde and the Celebrate expert are not going to say that. Um, now you can dismiss that and we can see what the FBI says and they can have a debate about it. I also want to say that there is, as I've pointed out in this case many times, there is a proportional relationship or an inversely proportional relationship between the um, possibility of no, planted evidence and the two. I'm not going to say that he's paid by Morrissey. I think uh, Koffendoffer is paid by Morrissey. Uh, absolutely. I think she is their paid P PR person. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the evidence just kind of points that way. Either that or she's just plain stupid. Um, maybe a little bit of both. Who knows? Uh, but <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's just get real here. Um, but no, nobody's paying this dude. Uh, he, he's too stupid. 227 search. If no evidence was planted in this case, then the 227 search is impossible. Okay? Because the only way the... Uh, okay. You just heard him say that shit out loud, right? If... If, the, if no planting of the evidence took place, then the 227 AM search isn't possible. I don't see what the fuck he's talking about because I don't see how one thing has anything to do with the other. That makes no sense, but he's about to go into it. I'd love to hear this explanation. That Karen is innocent here. I'm not talking about reasonable doubt, but I'm talking about just in fact, in fact, factually innocent, as, as they like to say, is if the evidence was planted. Because the evidence, the taillight evidence from her SUV was matched to what was found in the snowbank. So unless somebody planted that evidence, then 227 never happened. You can also wow. look at it the other way. If Based 227 on what? is proved to in fact be true, then evidence was planted. So you can really kind of connect these things together as you look at them. So if you look at this was a, this was a decisive factor for me back this summer when we were discussing 227 with other people on this channel. And to me, I'm not a data expert and I could read their. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean no one does not exclude the other automatically. The reason why <laughs> the reason why, Plevin, that the that if the 227 search actually happened, then. Yes, evidence was absolutely planted because how else are you going to fucking sell the sell the theory that poor Clubber, he's trying to scratch his head, but he can't because of the plastic thing. It's making too much noise. Um, you can't like, of, of course, of course, he's going to have to plant that evidence. Of course, he's going to have to plant that evidence in order to cover up the 227 search. In order, in order, in order for the 227 search to, to 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 be like this is nothing to see here. You have to have something solid, right? Like physical evidence, sure. But the thing is, is I don't see how if the 227 search didn't happen that automatically it means that the 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 evidence wasn't planted that's ridiculous that evidence could have absolutely still been planted of course it could have what does proctor planning evidence have anything to do with jennifer mccabe doing a google search of course he never actually really explains this their reports but it was very hard for me to tell and again, J.J. I'm saying 
227 happened, deal with it. No, I mean, it's not ra- it's not rational to be conclusive one way or the other here because you have experts on both sides. Uh, if the FBI expert is qualified, we don't know anything about him, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt that he might be. So you have some pretty highly esteemed experts on both sides that disagree on this. So um, no one should be certain. The guy with three PhDs may not be qualified. Got it, Plevin. About it, right? So then what you can do, though, is look at the other evidence and decide from there. So to the extent that you think evidence could have been planted, then you say, okay, 227 is possible. But to the extent that you think it could not have been planted. So for me, there was just no time. There was no opportunity to plant that evidence. And that's why I ended up concluding that 227 is almost, it almost certainly never happened. So let's go back. But there's a lot of interesting things here. So just some notes that I had. Um, So as we learn near the end, according to Yanetti, the federal investigation continues. Um, So that's interesting. I don't know why it takes them so long to get through this. And so how does this work with the feds? If they come up with something new, he keeps he keeps saying that too. He keeps alluding to that there is no federal investigation because it would have been concluded by now. How? How could you even imagine a timeline as to how long a federal investigation takes place when you don't know what they're going to what they're looking for or what they're going to find? An investigation takes as long as it takes to gather enough evidence to get a conviction in a court of law. That is how long it takes. That didn't happen in the Karen Reed case because they didn't investigate the right person. We're seeing this now. All of these things that are happening are connecting back to Karen Reed not hitting John O'Keefe with her SUV. Everything in all different directions is pointing is pointing in that direction. Everything coming from all these other different directions is all going to this one direction. That Karen Reed did not do this. New during the trial? Did they submit it? I mean, this is unprecedented. This is just amazing stuff here. Um, <laughs> according to Gennetti, at 2.22... Uh, Brian, Albert, and Higgins had a call. So what is the source of the information on that? How did the feds get that? Uh, From what we know, they don't have access. Well, nobody ever got access to Brian Albert's phone. And I don't believe Higgins ever turned over his phone. What what Higgins did was turn over um, records, basically, I assume, photos or or screenshots of his text. I think the next day he went in and did it. So how do you know that? How do you know that? Where are you getting that from? I would love to know where he got that information from. How do you know what methods the FBI used to get the information that they had this phone call? All we know is the conclusion. But how do you know that Higgins went and turned in his phone records He went and pulled up his own phone records and turned them in. Because I was under the impression that there was no indication that there was a federal investigation. That that Morrissey's office was whining and bitching about the fact that they never got a heads up that there was a federal investigation. So how could Higgins have the foresight to turn in his phone records the second day of this investigation? The very next day. How could you know that? And why would Higgins know to do that if they didn't know that they were being investigated and they were upset about the fact that they didn't know that they were being investigated? So, Plevin, you're lying. Are you this desperate for views where you're just going to make shit up? Because it's not a good look. If I could just shoot down your fucking blatant lie. That is not a good look for the people who listen to you. That is not a good look for you to the people who listen to you at all. Because you're just making shit up. There's no way that you could possibly know the nature of which they, the FBI have come to this conclusion. And what methods they use to investigate and get to this conclusion. There's no way you could know that when the contents and the details of this FBI investigation 
are they're 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 not public. They haven't been made public. You watch a video from who? Where's the details? I'd like to know how he has access or knows the the contents through a credible source. I'd love to know how he has information that has not been made public yet. The only thing that we know involving the federal investigation, the only things that we know are the letters and what the defense has presented in court yesterday. That's it. The details surrounding these things have not been made public. So I'd love to know how he knows. So when they looked at that, were they able to see that the existence of that call? Maybe. But the thing, also thing you have to wonder is, did the feds get a warrant to get communications of all of these people that were potentially involved? And I believe they did. We don't, we don't know that, that for certain. We're going to find out. But I believe that the feds got warrants to get this info, to get the communications of the troopers and who knows how else, <clears throat> anybody that they suspected here. Now, if they did, if they went through over all these phone records and that's all they have, Again, what I said at the beginning, you also have to kind of look at the things that were not said here. So if they did get all those communications and all they found was a call between Brian Higgins and Brian Albert at 222, I mean, did they find any calls of Brian, for instance, calling someone that might have reached out? Did they find evidence of uh, Brian calling Trooper Proctor or Trooper Buchanan? Did they find evidence of Brian calling someone else that called Trooper Proctor and Buchanan? No, th nobody, the defense didn't say that here. So that's because they only had 10 minutes. They were given they were given just over a week to present their case. Again, there's 3,100 pages. Who knows what else the defense has found? They probably picked through the most important things that they had only 10 minutes to present, which they didn't even know they only had 10 minutes to present. They thought they had all day. Walking into that courtroom yesterday, they thought they had all day because Auntie Bev said, we'll go all day if we have to, to go over what you find as far as the FBI's findings go. So, okay. But she slaps them with this 10-minute time limit. And so they're like, okay, I'm going to do what I can with that. So... No, that doesn't mean that they would necessarily share everything that they were, that, that, that means that likely they didn't get to share what they intended on sharing. If they had, thought they had all day, they didn't share everything that they had to share in regards to this case. Well, we don't know what's in that federal document. Uh, the judge now knows. So, but to me, it was pretty interesting that that was not said. Um, all right, so let's go back to the beginning because I did take notes from the beginning. All right, so according to Alan Jackson, this he didn't say how, but he says we now know how the feds began and when. So that's really interesting. What was the predication? Um, I think we're seeing that they always knew, at least Alan Jackson did. Uh, they tried to make it seem like it was a big deal that the feds didn't tell them about it, but they've always known. They've known since the beginning because it seems to have begun with them. And my sources say that Karen and her lawyers walked into the U.S. Attorney's Office and laid out their case. And this, we know there's been regular communication, to me, improper communication between the, the U.S. Attorney, Josh Levy, directly with Unetti and Jackson all along. So they always knew. It was the ones who were in the dark were the prosecutors here, which is ironic to have Unetti going out there and saying that they were in the dark. It was the opposite because they were working. The feds were essentially operating as a wing of the defense team. Now, if they were trying to uncover justice, uh, an injustice or a conspiracy, okay. But I don't know. We don't know what the connection is here. It's very strange to have the feds doing this. Um, I was interested to see them start with Link. I was like, man, if they're starting with that old story of the bar incident between <laughs> that happened where Chris Albert was at a bar and um, Sergeant Link was at a bar 20 years ago. This was revealed back in like, I don't know, December. I mean, uh, uh, May. I mean, dude. Why is it inappropriate for the defense to speak to the U.S. attorney? Since when? If if they are aware of a crime, if they've been made aware of a crime, 
and they report it to the one person that can actually do something about this crime, considering who they're accusing of the crime, well, then it's not inappropriate. Suzanne, thank you so much. The Fed investigation started before John was killed. Plevin does not comprehend the way he, uh, the feds work. He can call me and I will tell him. Right. I, I agree with you, Suzanne. That's the whole point. I believe that this that this investigation has been a thing since at least Sandra Birchmore. I am personally of the opinion, the more and more that this unfolds, I am personally of the opinion that they have been, that the Norfolk County DA's office has been under the radar of the U.S. Attorney's Office and the feds since Sandra Birchmore, at least. May or June, it was revealed. I think in May, it was revealed pretty early on. So if they're still focusing on that, I was like, damn, there's no bombshell here. You know, but they well, that's the thing is it's relevant if they are, if it's, it's, it's relevant, even though it's an old story, it's relevant if now they're actually seeking to investigate it and the nature of it, who benefits from it, what happens. So even though it's an old situation, it's relevant now if they're bringing it up because it could be absolutely directly connected to, and that is what they are alluding to, is that it's absolutely connected to the Karen Reed investigation. That the nature of Lank and anyone else involved in this case is somehow questionable, the nature of their association then that story is relevant. Just because it happened a long time ago and it's old news, it doesn't mean that it's not relevant to the current situation. And Lank was involved in Birchmore too. But they did have some other interesting stuff, but I was really surprised to see Alan Jackson start on that. So the connections between the, the, the eunuch is here, the young jerks, Mike Crawford, the eunuch himself, um, it's over. <laughs> you don't think there's going to be a trial now? I mean, this is crazy. You don't. You literally don't have any ability to interpret anything, do you? See, now he gets upset because uh, Mike Crawford, young jerks, jumped in there, and he's like, and he and he said it's over, and so he's like, you don't have anything to go on that. I he does now. He does today. I mean, he did yesterday when he said it. He he still had reason to say that. Yeah, it's over. Now, I'm not saying it won't go to trial, but I'm saying I think it's pretty safe to say with everything that's going on and the kind of attention that this case ha now has, the federal attention that this case now has, I think that Auntie Bev, her decision making moving forward in this case is definitely going to be the things that are that have now been brought to light are going to impact Auntie Bev's decision making moving forward. That is what I absolutely believe. Because she would be a fool if if that didn't happen. Because if she absolutely if she decides to move forward with this trial, she is possibly subjecting herself to she is possibly subject, subjecting herself to reprimand at least by the bar. Because think about it. Think about it. If, if, if she makes any decision moving forward that does not seem in the best interest of, of, of the concept of innocent until proven guilty, well, then she's in trouble. And right now, there is more than enough reason. There is more than enough reason now that this case should be dismissed. And the people who were in charge of this investigation need to be reprimanded. They need to be answered. They, they, they need to answer for this. I mean, it, it's it's just how that is. There's, there's no other way around that. In a system that is designed to look at 
the accused as innocent until proven guilty with everything that we know involving this investigation. We know that Karen Reed's rights have been violated. We know that there was deception when it came to the grand jury. We know this. So at this point, Auntie Bev is taking a big, big career risk by not dismissing this case. She can't get in trouble for dismissing this case. She's not going to get in any trouble. That's playing it safe at this point. Dismissing this case is playing it safe on her end. Because she has grounds to do it. And she can say, she can stand up there in a press conference and go, in a system that we pride ourselves in being a part of here as court officers, in a system that is designed to keep the innocent innocent until proven guilty, I have no other choice, but I have no other ethic obligation, ethical obligation other than to dismiss this case because the Commonwealth had failed to present this case properly. She could call it negligence. She could just say there's too much wrong with this case and how this investigation was conducted for, the, for me to ethically move forward in good conscience move forward with the trial for the sake of not just Karen Reed's rights, but the taxpayers' rights. The taxpayers' assurance that their taxes are going to something sound and going towards justice. She will absolutely be off the hook if she were to explain things in something along those lines. It's actually suspicious that she would move forward with this investigation or with, with this trial. It's actually suspicious that she would do that. Especially in a climate where we're all wondering who's corrupt and who isn't. In that kind of climate, Judge Bev better be making decisions based on how she's reading that climate and what her place in that climate is. I just take another toke, go back to sleep. All right. So everything's a the jab. Fact that they started out going back. Everything's up. a jab. Like, yeah, Mike Crawford is is he doesn't know what he's talking about because he smokes weed, right? <laughs> Dude, this guy's just a dick. I'm sorry. So that was to try to show there was a connection between the Alberts and the local investigators. And this was another thing that Alan Jackson said, which was extremely dishonest. He said that the CPD case, the CP, the, the Ken Police Department was recused from this case because of the connections between Lank and the Alberts. That's crazy. All right. Massachusetts, its law is that in any kind of a suspicious homicide, it automatically goes to the state police, except in the three other large municipal areas that have homicide departments. So that would be Boston, Worcester, and Springfield. In every other town, it automatically goes to the state police. So there was no recusal that just automatically went to them. So that was just another example of Alan Jackson trying to trick us. And um, I'm sure Mike Crawford fell for it. But Proctor, the connections are a little bit more Enough to yeah, make but, see, a bit uncomfortable. but see, Plevin, let's just say that's true. Let's just say that you and your track record of talking completely out of your ass, that you actually said something that was accurate. Let's just say that's true, right? Why Proctor? Why was Proctor having personal phone calls with Jennifer McCabe the morning of? Why was Proctor in direct communication with Jennifer McCabe the morning of? Why was Proctor the trooper that was assigned to the case? And why is Proctor and the McCabe's hanging out together? Why didn't Proctor recuse himself from the case? Why didn't Proctor say, hey, I have a personal relationship with these people and, uh, the best thing to do here is just get somebody on the on, on, on get get another stady on this who who uh, doesn't know these people because we don't want these people using this shit in court and weaseling out of it. If he honestly believed that Karen Reed was guilty and they had enough strong evidence, why would he risk the 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 entire 
the, the, the integrity of the investigation in its entirety. Why would he risk that? By not just simply going, hey, you know what? Uh, I know these people. I don't want these people to use this bullshit in court. You know what I mean? And then the guilty person gets off on a technicality, like a conflict of interest between one of the witnesses and the, the lead investigator on the case. If he wasn't guilty of covering things up, or planning evidence. If we are to believe that Proctor is not capable of this, the guy who is currently under investigation by his own department, if we are to believe that this is a sound investigation and that they have plenty of evidence that is going to absolutely nail Karen Reed to the wall, then why wouldn't he just recuse himself from the investigation? And even act as an off-the-books liaison to the lead investigator. They're all colleagues. Why not? Because it's incredibly suspicious that he wouldn't do that. That right there is incredibly suspicious, along with every other thing that we've seen Proctor do so far. comfortable here so they didn't cover a little bit more messaging between julie uh, albert and uh who and who is chris albert's wife right and and um proctor's sister okay but no they didn't uncover any connections between proctor himself and the alberts or even elizabeth herself and the Alberts. so there's a there's, there is a little bit instead of a six degrees to kevin bacon maybe it's now a four degrees to kevin bacon is that something that should have been more honestly revealed yeah probably um and is that something that a jury should factor yes I do think it should go to a jury, though, and they should factor it, and the troopers will get a chance to testify, and that's how the system works. Um, and the and the jury can decide on the credibility of the troopers. I mean, no. But again, as you look at no, 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 Levin, you're 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 missing something. Yeah, like that's how the system works. If the integrity of an investigation was sound to get us there in the first place, that integrity is not sound. That integrity is fucked. That's what you're misunderstanding. Yes, that's how the system works. But the system works like that because the system also works that the nature of an uh, of an investigation, the, the integrity of an investigation is sound. That didn't happen here. There's a conflict of interest left and right. And there are way too many holes in the evidence that they are claiming is solid evidence. When it is not solid. Any moron can explain away something that would create doubt on something that they're considering solid evidence. Any moron can do that. The entire integrity of the investigation is compromised, which means that the integrity of the entire case is compromised. Absolutely. Because if they cared so much about getting justice for John O'Keefe, they would have documented everything meticulously the way that you've explained that they document everything meticulously. Yet, even though you are saying that these are trained investigators who document everything meticulously, you have yet to touch on the fact that they didn't document everything meticulously. And you're not questioning that. You are failing to even acknowledge this fact. The very fact that you bring up, hey, these people, they know what they're doing. They're professionals. They're going to document every single thing meticulously. Didn't you say that? But they didn't. So the integrity of this investigation is fucked from the word go. the totality of the evidence there's no real chance that or there's, there's no real opportunity even if they wanted 
to somehow fudge this investigation. There really isn't any opportunity for it. And you notice that, that none of that was really pointed out today. There was at no point did Alan Jackson stand up and talk about any specific piece of evidence that has been discovered to have been fudged with. At no point. There was no mention of Brian Wallace. So we can put that to bed, right? But Brian Wallace is the Canton police officer who um, now retired, but owns an auto body shop. And for some inexplicable reason, the theory goes he was brought in by the state police to remove the taillight as part of some cover up. It, it, we've talked about it. It's never made sense. It's a focus of Sean's. It wasn't mentioned today. So that's pretty much done. Um, it's not trial yet, dickhead. Look at notes. Jim McCabe's phone. All right. <laughs> this guy's All right. So that was the gist. Of, so the gist of, of um, Alan Jackson's opening was that Proctor is compromised. That's what they've been saying all along. It, it, nothing that they found established that. Oh, also note that there were no um, discovered communications. Yeah. Mind you guys, this is yesterday right after the stream. I was still live with Turtle Boy when he was doing this. So... Um, I was still live with Turtle Boy and Brian when we were still doing this. And this dude, like, is saying there's nothing to indicate that Proctor is compromised, which there was, actually. There was plenty to indicate that Proctor was compromised. But now, I wonder what say you about that now, Plevin. Is Proctor compromised now? Is his credibility compromised in any way, shape, or form now that he's being investigated by his own department? Between the Alberts or the McCabe's to Proctor that day. So this, like, John, I'm sorry, caps, that, that cap thing is just not allowed. Just to repeat, anybody coming in with all caps, it's obnoxious. It's just not allowed. So just have a civil discussion, okay? You know, like the sensitivity, man, it's it's once that sensitivity rises, like things like somebody with all caps. <laughs> oh, yellow garbage pails, I'm blocking you. Not allowed. No all caps. You must use punctuation. You must you must use your grammar skills from the third grade in order to be in my chat. Oh. Did he throw his phone? When did he throw his phone? Okay. Well, we want to go over the evidence in a both sides kind of way. You can disagree with me. You can disagree with anybody in here, but let's be rational and calm and just discuss this stuff. Try to look at every single piece. Why are you gaslighting this dude? Like, because he fucking typed in all caps. Some people just fucking keep their shit on all caps. If they're typing with a keyboard, some people just do that. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, it's a little, it's spammy, you know? Okay. But you, you just made a big deal about it. Like, like a child. <laughs> of information that came out here in a both sides kind of way. Um, I understand it's an emotional case for a lot of people. They've invested maybe a lot of time and emotion into this over the last year, but let's not all be sure of things. And let's try to just look at, and there's a lot of interesting things that can be discussed in this case that um, are going to be precedent setting or really something that'll be studied in law schools. No. I agree. Uh, trying to see some of the comments. I see some good comments from people before I get back to the notes. Uh, Antiquated Rogue points out that um, this is big that they never brought. By the way, uh, good grandma, sorry. We don't use Gen Z terminology in here. We don't call lies caps, okay? Um, I, I understand that tensions are high, and I understand that we want to use Gen Z slang, but if you're going to say, if you're going to refer to lies, you have to call them lies in my chat. Do not ever use cap as slang for lies in my chat okay we don't do that here if you're gonna do i need you to calm down good grandma i need you to calm down i know we're all uppity here a lot of tensions are high feelings are flying okay <laughs> or brought up the geofence of john in the house or no evidence of planted daylight right now we don't know to what degree they never, we know that they never requested any evidence from the state. So this was another huge factor here that, that uh, Lally discussed. So everything that they had from the evidence, they got from the defense team. And it means. Yeah. 
That's why it's called evidence, bro. It's evidence because it's evidence, dude. It's evidence because it's evidence. Okay? Like, it doesn't matter where they got it from. If it's evidence, it's fucking evidence. And again, dude, they're not going to fucking... They're not going to ask the people that they're investigating for evidence. Why the fuck would they ask the people that they're investigating for evidence to use against them? That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. And you keep saying it. <laughs> like, you keep saying it. Like, as if it's suspicious that the very people that they're investigating didn't provide them with the evidence to use against them. That they didn't ask for it from the very people that they're investigating, that, that that's somehow suspicious and shady. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. It means, as and there's no indication of what the defense team came. The defense never indicated that. So obviously the defense team was hand-feeding the feds the materials that, that helped make their case or helped create doubt. Um, so we don't know to what degree they made some effort to look at the evidence, but they did do that. That We did learn that today. So one of the things that we have been discussing in the past is maybe the feds just went in and the only thing that they wanted to focus on was whether or not the uh, troopers had connections or were in any way corrupted, right? And there's no, and that, that maybe they did that, and but didn't bother to look into the evidence because they didn't think that was their job. But we know that they did look into the evidence because they managed, if nothing else, they got an FBI expert to look at the data and that's the evidence. They got an FBI, so if nothing else, they examined that. Um, so they were doing some look at looking at evidence and at no point did they bring up any evidence that was suspect. At no point did they bring up any evidence, uh, that was, any indication that the things were that evidence was planted. They didn't bring up the geofence. They did go and get apparently three. They didn't have time to. Like the whole point, the whole nature of their argument was was that they 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 needed grounds to dismiss the case. They presented the grounds to dismiss the case. They, dis they they presented the grounds to disqualify District Attorney Morrissey from the case. That was their whole focus. The other shit they'll get to when the time comes. If the federal investigation, because again, the federal, th this is a separate thing. This is an independent federal investigation into District Attorney Morrissey's office and who he has collecting evidence in order to convict people. That's that's what the investigation was about. That stuff's not going to come up yet. That's going to come up after they indict these people for misconduct and corruption. That's the stuff that will happen. You just got to wait. You just got to wait. But it'll happen. Okay? We're not, just, we're not there yet. According to Alan Jackson, three independent experts, and we should point out that Lally didn't dispute this. Lally didn't dispute this, that, or at least he didn't dispute it in that ten minutes allotted. They may have disputed it in the motion, in their in their reply to the motion. But so, the claim is that the feds got three independent experts to look at John's what's listed on John's injuries, and look at the damage of the taillight, and try to come up with an accident reconstruction theory. And these three experts supposedly were not able to do that. Again, so it's fascinating, right? So uh, we've been talking about this since day one. I attempted it with uh, a video that I put out that I paid for an animation back several months ago. <laughs> My, I was speculating that John was bent over, picking up <laughs> his phone, holding his glass up when she backed into him. But it was just a speculation. And I don't know I mean, I, I, every indication that I was probably wrong on that. But yeah, if we don't get a theory that is convincing to a jury as to how that accident happened, that jury's- yeah, We remember that video, Plevin. And so it sounds like that's- We remember. Increased here at this point. But, but again, we don't know what those experts are. They're going to have to be cross-examined, right? I don't really I find it strange that the feds are going to go out there and not get evidence from the state, only get, and so not get the state theory of this, and get these independent experts. I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to me a little bit suspicious. Um, like the, Again, like the feds, for some reason, were trying to help the defense team. But we'll see, right? We'll see. Only time will tell as this trial proceeds. Um, the trial's definitely going to proceed. There's no way. Nothing was presented here that would be anywhere near strong enough to overcome the heavy burden of having to show that the grand jury was 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 shown false evidence in a way that would have impacted your decision. It wasn't even close to that. So it's definitely going to trial. Uh, no, you know, we'll see. I didn't hear going to trial. the defense argue for any partic particular piece of evidence to be dismissed either. So I think you're going to see the trial is going to center around the issues that we're largely discussing here and some of the other ones. It doesn't seem like the feds found anything particularly compelling or we would have heard about it today.
Go back to sleep. Um, let's see. Lally said, "Go back to bed." Discovery material was. They don't know what percentage was given to the feds. Um, I love that he's like, he, I, 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 the, the, the fed, the feds try to recreate a right, tried to recreate the scene like, like I did. Like, bro, come on, dude. Like, let's let's just get real, bro. Like, let's just get real. The feds. The feds tried to recreate this like I did. You remember when I made that video? When I made the video of the of 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 of, of it hitting John because he bent over to pick up a glass. You remember that? You you, you remember that video? <laughs> <laughs> One more time. One more time. Mary Hughes is 83. Needs a... <laughs> Plevin. Plevin. Go back to sleep, bro. We'll wake you up when it's over. We'll wake up you and Grant, let you guys know when it's all over. You, Grant, Coffin Doffer. We'll we'll wake you guys up. Go take your nap. Go back to sleep. We'll wake you up when it's all over. <laughs> all right, people. This is going on five hours now. All right. I still got to go to the gym. Um, you guys are amazing. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, this has been fun. Um and there's still a lot more to come, man. Uh, more developments to come as far as the uh, Michael Proctor investigation. Uh, things are looking up, people. Things are looking up. Uh, and again, I, I, I agree with Turtle Boy, man. Like, I hope that this isn't just some lame attempt, which most likely is. Let's just be honest. Most likely, this is just an attempt uh, by D.A. Morrissey's office in the Massachusetts State Police to have someone fall on their sword. Now, I'm not saying the Massachusetts State Police is corrupt. I'm saying members are corrupt. Like Proctor. I absolutely believe that Michael Proctor is absolutely corrupt. Without a doubt in my mind. Um, now, um, the fact that he's under investigation, it's a big deal. It's not to be ignored. Uh, but again, I hope this isn't a case where, where, you know, again, somebody needs to fall on their sword and then everybody just goes, see, we got the bad guy. We got the guy. Now let's move on with convicting this woman falsely of this crime. No. Okay. There, there have to be more to answer for this. Um, she needs to be. The, the, the charges need to be dropped. If he's the lead investigator and he's falling on his sword, then the, the integrity in the entire investigation is fucked. It's officially fucked, especially if they find something that proves to be some sort of there's no way that they could win in court. I mean, if this goes to trial, there's no way that they could say that the lead investigator who has since been reprimanded for his um misconduct involving this investigation he's the lead investigator so all the evidence that he's collected is is valid somehow there's no way they'll present that to a jury and it'll fly there's just no way they have to dismiss these charges against karen reed if the lead investigator's integrity and his uh his credibility is fucked their case is fucked it's done so um yeah, I, I just uh, Karen Reed is not going to trial. I, I just I do not see how Beverly Canone can move forward with this trial with everything that's happening right now. 
it, 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 I, I, I will be totally of the opinion at that point that she is corrupt as well. I, I cannot see anything that would influence her decision that would be justified, that would justify her not dismissing this case. Um, so yay, Hannibal and Monty time. What are you talking about? Um, soon that's definitely going to happen soon. I think, um, that's still on the table, Petty Patty. I hope so. Um, I got back to them pretty late about that, uh, because there was obviously other stuff going on involving this case, but I'm definitely going to sit aside, uh, a stream. Um, oh, Hannibal and Monty are going live right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, guys, check out Hannibal and Monty. Um, but guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it. You guys are absolutely fantastic. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for liking the video. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you're new subscribers, it means a lot to me. It really does. Uh, and thank you guys for all of the support. Um, you guys are amazing. I love you very much. And we will do this again very soon, my friends.